Welcome everyone and thank you for being here. On this video we'll be discussing multiple concepts that I use on a daily basis to be able to analyze and profit from the forex market. But before we actually get into the video and all that's due, we need to discuss some more important matters. Every single concept that I will explain, every example that you'll see was and is taught by ICT on different of his videos. Whether it is through the ICT mentorship, which is the main source for this video, the card content ser series, or even older things such as market maker series, sniper and trading series, and more. So before I get into explaining anything and then receiving hate for it i'm not trying to replace ict i'm not saying that any of these concepts were developed by me and if you are actually really interested in learning each of these concepts in a more thorough manner you can and you should do that from ict's videos himself now after getting that out of the way there is one more thing there are concepts i use daily as the ones that i'll mention that i might not know specifically the concept or definition behind them i do not know why each of these work the way that they do i just know how to use them how to use the concepts that repeat in the market to be able to predict whether price can where price can be in the next few minutes hours or all days and as ICT himself has said on multiple, multiple occasions, uh, don't believe what I say or talk about, just look at it and then when you look into your own charts, you can determine for by yourself if what I'm saying works, happens or not, right? As a small addition to this, I do want to say that there are multiple parts and multiple minutes on this video where I'm talking with the background completely static and those parts of the video is where i'm explaining the most there are the parts where i'm explaining while moving things around the screen showing things explaining along with what um what i'm showing on the screen basically but i do want to mention that if you skip those parts you're going to miss out on a lot of things because it's literally when i i'm explaining the most the important things right so just wanted to to make sure that and continue watching the video so now i do believe we have everything everything ready to go ahead with the concepts so i hope this video is everything that you're hoping for and without further ado enjoy all right so let's begin with liquidity liquidity is as i mentioned through the introduction um it's going to be complicated for me to teach some of the concepts because I don't really understand how they work, I just know how to use them, right? So, if we're going to give it a concept from my point of view, it will be complicated and I haven't really found a way to give it an actual definition. Reason why, I'll try to explain it the way that I believe it is and how it works for me personally. Liquidity is simply orders. Orders and stop losses, right? Whether it is stop orders, limit orders, or stop losses. From retail traders just like us. Each and every single low and high will have and has liquidity, which again are these orders. So how does it work specifically? Well, the market overall needs liquidity to be able to move. Using ICT's war, ICT wars, the market goes from buy side liquidity to sell side liquidity to buy side liquidity to then sell side liquidity again and so on and so forth. If the market didn't have liquidity, it couldn't work as well as it does. Citing is ICT again from a video that I do recommend you watching, which is ICT's price action lecture, uh, liquidity perch and reverts. Uh, the market runs taking out those sellers, allowing smart money traders, large institutions, bank traders, using that liquidity to be a counterparty party to their buying. So. Liquidity is also used for big traders to liquidate, liquidate their positions to close their winnings. And if large traders were selling, they'd need buyers to be able to close those positions. Now, going back to my attempt at a simple between quotes explanation, liquidity is everywhere. But we're going to focus on lows and highs. The market, when going to a certain direction, will seek liquidity before moving forward with the trend slash direction that has already been set. Also, after a break on a lower high, a change in direction could happen, or at least some kind of retracement. Of course, all of this needs context. How can we actually use liquidity in our advantage? I use it in many things, right? Bias mostly. Indication of higher or lower prices. First thing before a trade, and so on. Right? So, let's go one by one. How can we determine the bias with just liquidity? 
as mentioned before by ICT, um, price moves from buy side to sell side liquidity all the time, and vice versa, of course. So if we're looking at higher time frames or even lower time frames, there are moves that take big amounts of liquidity from one side, and therefore we could be looking for a move to the other extreme, as we'll see examples later on the daily bias concept. So after having a bias determined, whether it is by higher time frames or other things that we can use, as I will explain later, let's put as an example a bullish trend. What we can wait for is a run on sell side liquidity to then seek a continuation of the trend. Same thing will be on the bearish trend, just waiting for a run on buy side liquidity to then seek the continuation lower. But of course, again, all of this needs context. So what can we use as context? Well. Liquidity is entirely step one out of my strategy. As you probably already know, my strategy is based on five steps that I follow each and every single day to try and find opportunities in the market. So all step one is completely based on liquidity. Now we're going to see some examples before going on to step two, which is some screenshots that I've gathered from GBP dollar and I think euro dollar as well maybe not we'll see so the first step we see is price has caused a move higher this is the one hour chart causes a move higher retraces it founds it finds a low starts to respect that low starts going higher ranges retraces as you can see when price starts to retrace back into the level it actually does respect it again now again every single low every single high has liquidity so as an example this low has liquidity this low has liquidity this low has liquidity now there's another concept that i will explain later i believe which is what i like to call manipulation it's just in this case right we already have liquidity below this low why do we have liquidity because you have to understand how retail traders look at charts like this if you well not retail traders retail minded traders right traders that trade with as an example support and resistance supply and demand um what else can we say trend lines as an example multiple things that are used by mostly again retail minded traders we are all retail traders just not trading like retail most of the times as an example uh ict's methods are not retail trading right retail trading methods so as an example, this could be considered as support and then another mitigation to around the same level causing a reaction generates more interest in people trying to buy in here, right? Put, putting their stop losses just below. And not, on, not only that, but also sell stops being placed below this low, which generates, um, not generates, but basically what people believe is that if the market can hold this level, because it either is too strong or for whatever reason they believe the market is holding this level. If you were to fail, that would mean that price could fall a lot, right? It could just continue to fall if this level was to ever be broken, right? So what is it that we have here? We basically have sell side liquidity. This low already was sell side liquidity. The fact that another low was created at this, the exact same level it's just a little bit of an extra confluence. And again, what I like to call manipulation, but we'll get into that onto the next one. This is the exact same chart, but with a little bit of more context after of what happens afterwards. So example, we have another high here. So that will be considered buy side liquidity. As liquidity as it is a high that price was going, stops and then starts going lower, right? There's buy side liquidity here because there are people that is trying to sell from this point with their stop losses just above. And there's people that is trying to buy with buy stops just above this high, believing that if this level is to be broken, it could continue going higher aggressively, right? So a lot of buy side liquidity is built up above this level. And here, the fact that price goes barely above that high, it for me, from my point of view, it tends to be not really a run on buy side liquidity, just a little bit of more liquidity being created, right? I might be wrong about it, but when a tiny run like that happens, I don't really consider it as a run on buy side or sell side liquidity, right? So as you can see here, what is it that happens? We had the level that we were discussing just a couple of minutes ago, a couple of seconds ago, and then price goes aggressively through it, right? Aggressively through it, aggressive move, runs below the sell side liquidity, and then changes direction immediately, 
right? And what does he seek? Buy side liquidity. So how could have we determined that price could have gone higher before, not before, but after taking this loss? By the fact that he took sell side liquidity and now he could simply seek buy side liquidity. We do have other confluences such as an order block back here, a fair value gap back here, but we will discuss those things more um, deeper or well, yeah, deeper into the video. Here we have already a bullish trend set by GBP dollar, which is after this price action that we see here. As you can see, price is going higher. We have a high, 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 low, high, high. It breaks the low. And what do you believe happens when this low is broken? First of all, people that see, sees the market on just a simple high highs, high lows um, perspective, they think that the trend has changed. So they're going to believe that this high managed to break this low, change in the direction that could cause for price to basically um, respect this level, creating buy side liquidity above this high. Also, this low theoretically cause the continuation of the trend so it shouldn't be broken which means that there are uh, stop losses right below that low there's buy side liquidity about the hot this high taken by this one so what is it that we have here prices aggressively higher continues going higher then aggressively goes lower takes sell side liquidity and as you can see just continues going higher right we even have a lot of a little bit of a consolidation in here that creates one low another low here all taking a sell side liquidity to then continue higher and of course, keep in mind that this is the one hour chart. As an example, um, let me see if I can find something in here that I might have not noticed. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But as an example, this little, this candle means that there were 60 candles that went a little bit higher, then a little bit lower, and then higher to close here, right? And then this low is below this one. What does it mean that it could have happened inside this inside the lower time frames it means that a low was created the low was taken and then a continuation higher happened we could say the exact same thing about this low we could say the exact same thing about this low compared to this one takes the low continues going higher right um we also have as an example this low this low might be more important in lower time frames compared to the higher time frames on, on which we're on. Now, we're going to do something a bit more obvious, yet important to understand. GBP dollar has been bearish for quite some time, keeping this in mind, what can we do? What can we expect price will do before continuing with the trend? Continuing with the trend. Run, run and buy side liquidity to then see continuations lower. Let's see what we can find just from the daily chart. And I say just on that, because as you can see, this is the daily chart. I will zoom into uh, more examples. Uh, we'll zoom into the examples but that means that in the daily chart there are going to be maybe a hundred opportunities that we can spot but then in the lower time frames we might get um instead of 100 we might get 500 instead of 500 in an even lower time frame we could which we could get a thousand opportunities to continue adding, to continue to go lower right we got multiple things simply multiple things right so um let's see couple of the, the examples, right? We have that price is bearish on GBP dollar. Let's suppose we analyze GBP dollar and we expect a bearish direction. Look at what we have on the daily chart. At this point, clearly the direction has been set. We have a high here, another high here, right? And as you can see, this high, let's actually zoom into this, this high is taken by this high. And as you can see, it does cause a pretty aggressive move. Does it mean the fact that later is taken that this move failed not really because you gotta imagine yourself and we will discuss this much further and, and in much more depth in the daily bias you gotta think about the fact that this high is taken and each of these candles are one entire day so if this buy side liquidity is taken what can we expect price to do if the daily chart, as you can see, has been bearish? I think the example, this example is this price action that we have here. This, yeah. Right, has been bearish already. Just took buy sell liquidity. And as you can see, it starts to react bearishly. Can we expect price to go lower from this point? Definitely. So each of these days provide us an opportunity to look for those lower prices, provide us with the opportunity to look for the exact same thing, a run on buy sell liquidity to seek lower prices. 
With this high, this candle's high, we could have expected the price to take that buy sell liquidity to then seek lower prices, as it does. Maybe in the lower time frames, this was a run of buy sell liquidity, and so on and so forth. So, see how price impulses, and when it retraces, it seeks buy sell liquidity to later continue with the expected direction? The boxes that you see will be areas where we are interested in seeing price giving us confluences of potential reversals that we can take advantage of. Of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that this box is where the reversal has to happen. But after that round of buys of liquidity, it's when we start looking for that to occur. We have run on buys of liquidity, aggression lower, buys of liquidity due to multiple highs. As you can see, multiple highs are being built up around the same levels, takes that and starts going aggressively lower. We have one high here, takes that, ranges, continues aggressively lower. We have other things that we'll discuss later, such as fair value gap on this, fair value gap here, although that one fails, fair value gap here, fair value gap right there, and so on and so forth. Let's look into still the daily chart, more examples. Run on buy sell liquidity. This is actually the last example that we see here. That's what this one is. As an example, this move higher, not very clear liquidity on this impulse, right? It does it does mitigate a daily very short of the box as an example, which is an extra confluence in my opinion, but it doesn't have a clear run and buy sell liquidity because ideally we see as an example, if this is the run and buy sell liquidity, the height that it runs above ideally is as an example above around here, right? So this is the high, runs above buy sell liquidity, and that is it, right? That's it. But as an example, in this case, we didn't really have clear, clear and close buy side liquidity to then continuating to then continue going lower. We do have another another example here. It starts retracing. As an example, in this one, we neither on this example we didn't have uh, a high or a clear high to take a buy side liquidity. So this high is created a little bit of a move lower, aggression higher, it takes buy side liquidity, impulse retracement continuation, verbally gap in here, which again we'll discuss later. More examples, random buys at liquidity. This is a fair value gap. We haven't explained that yet, but basically multiple, multiple things. Now, we will now look at this exact example after the run buys at liquidity visible on the daily chart, zooming to the one hour and four hour charts, which actually I think I only did it for, for the one hour and see what we actually find on this, right? So as you can see, the daily chart again, continues to be bearish, it goes above a high, taking this buy side liquidity as you can see we start seeing some aggression aggressive move lower what do we have here this couple of highs are around the same level taken by this high and look at the reaction afterwards fair value gap in here as well so let's see what we can find in the lower time frames this is the run the daily run of buy side liquidity so this same um line is what we're seeing here goes above that and as you can see immediately we see a change in the direction going aggressively lower we do have verbal gaps again i haven't i haven't explained that but as you can see maybe at the beginning it's a bit difficult because you think okay so this high hasn't taken by sell liquidity this high as an example it definitely has because it went above this high it starts going lower and maybe in here where are we are trapped looking for lower time for opportunities and we end up taking a couple of losses or a loss right thing is that then you can see how as an example if price were to retrace back here you can understand how multiple reactions are happening around the same area and what does that create that creates what uh what ICT calls liquidity pool and it's really not much of an extra confluence not, not much of an extra confluence much of an extra uh, concept it is simply a pool of liquidity a it's like saying you have jars or buckets of water that if you put together in a pool, it'll be a pool filled with water, right? On this case, on this example, is we have liquidity above this high, we have liquidity above this high, we have liquidity above this high, and all of them are happening around the same area, which means that most of this buy side liquidity is basically the same, but as it is multiple highs, it's multiple multiple liquidities being put together which means that this is or could be called a liquidity pool that's the way that i like to explain it, or the way that i like to explain it to myself because i've actually never explained this so multiple reactions are around the same level meaning buy side liquidity in here right what does price do here goes above each and every single high of this maybe this is respected generating more but the thing is that it did take buy side liquidity and then it starts going aggressively lower 
retracement buy side liquidity goes continues with the trend takes sell side retraces buy side continues going aggressively lower this high is not taken as you can see continues going lower 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 in the lower time frames maybe the 5 to 15 minute this high is this couple of highs are pretty clear buy side liquidity or maybe even this high or maybe even this high right so that's when the multi time frame analysis also comes in play now further right uh, still the one hour sometimes a high low that takes liquidity could cause a pretty aggressive move which we can take advantage of but later this same swing fails and be used as liquidity itself still the concept so the concept itself shows to be there and what i mean with that is that it's that as an example we have this move taking this by sell liquidity and as you can see it causes a pretty aggressive move lower that we could have taken advantage of maybe we were aiming at this sell side liquidity or maybe we were aiming to something a bit further that could have made us either miss out on some profits or just get away with some partials doesn't really matter thing is that this random buy sell liquidity about this high causes a pretty aggressive move lower but as you can see what happens later price goes higher we also have another random buy sell liquidity about this high right it takes that and look at the move that it creates is it wrong for us to take advantage of this move um and then price goes higher and actually takes its highest buy side liquidity were we wrong about looking for sales in here in my opinion we weren't price took buy side liquidity and that buy side liquidity was enough to cause price to go lower seeked for or went lower to seek or find more sell side liquidity to then retrace take more buy side liquidity and as you can see this the run above this high ends up causing a much larger impulse. What happens after this run of buys of liquidity? It goes aggressively lower. And as you can see, price just continues respecting that trend. Again, in lower time frames, this high is buy sell liquidity. In this time frame specifically, we don't really see that. There's buy sell liquidity here with this high and this tiny bit of a reaction here. Equal highs being taken as buy sell liquidity before moving on with the trend. Tiny bit of a range, buy sell liquidity taken, aggression lower. And that's how I like. And of course, each of these candles are an entire day. By common sense, you can understand how the lower time frames will also repeat these behaviors, allowing us to use the concepts on a daily basis. Right? Because, of course, if we're looking at a, at a daily chart, we're not going to be able to use liquidity every single day. Not every day we're going to have a run of sell side, a run of buy side liquidity from the daily chart. Right, But in the one minute, runs on sell side and buy side liquidity happens every couple of minutes. Right, um, So yeah, this is a really good concept that I love using because if we use it in the right context, we can understand why price is going above a high or below a low just to continue going lower or higher respectively right we can understand why we could be looking for sales after a high has been broken while a retail minded trader could be looking for buys because a high was broken and the trend has changed right also as we'll talk we'll talk about market shifts and market structure now but it can be confusing and you can confuse between the two concepts of a market shift and a run and buy sell liquidity. And as I mentioned at the beginning, everything de de depends on a context. Everything depends on context. We're not going to be selling every time a high is taken. We're not going to be buying every time a low is taken. Because that doesn't make sense. But when we have other confluences, higher time frame confluences, or any kind of confluences really that makes us understand that this as an example run and buy sell liquidity could cause a continuation of a major time frame trend or we believe that price could go lower from here and we see a run on buy sell liquidity then those are confluences that are, are starting to stack up with each other meaning that we can take advantage of that as more and more things start to make sense putting them all together as we'll do at the end so that's pretty much it for liquidity now we're going to jump onto market structure which uh let's just let's just get to the next part so market structure this is something that i will not go uh over very thoroughly because uh it's something that theoretically at this point we all know we all understand how it works and we're going to jump straight onto market shifts right so a market shift is a shift in the direction of price delivery, right? When price is going in one direction and then shifts to the, of course, exact opposite. So how can we spot these market shifts in the market? It's simply by understanding how higher highs, higher lows, or low lows, lower highs work along with impulses and retracements. 
As you'll see in the examples, I'm usually not very strict on what I call a market shift, mostly in lower time frames. If there's just a candle that is broken, candle that created a higher low or a lower high, which theoretically will change the direction, that usually will be simple enough. And you'll see that on the examples when we put it all together. Because, um, let's just, let's just go over it. As an example, here we have our first examples, which is in the five minute time frame. And you can see how price is going lower, creating a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And then the lower high, the most recent lower high, is broken by a higher high. And then a higher low happens. So then a higher high, to a higher low, to a higher high, higher low, and so on and so forth. And as you can see, the trend changed based on this market shift. So what dictated this market shift there? The simple fact that... Oh, I, did, I don't have the other... Sorry. The fact that price was going lower by creating lower lows and lower highs, and then a higher high was created, changing that. And here is when the issues begin, because you could say, okay, well, this might have been a round of buy-side liquidity. And it is a round of buy-side liquidity. Why did I not look for sales here? First of all, because we are outside of a kill zone, right? I, I, I haven't explained that yet, but we are outside of a kill zone. But second of all, because I didn't see confluences to sell. If the trend is already bearish by this, by this standards <clears throat> of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, I'm going to be looking for confluences to sell. But the only thing that I got in my favor here is a run of buy sell liquidity. Is that enough? For me personally, it is not. Right? Uh, I look for other things as you will be able to see in the future. So this is pretty much all that you really need to understand. This is a little bit of a more complicated chart as we do have other highs or tiny highs, tiny lows in the middle. That is an example. This tiny break here, in my opinion, is a market shift. And when used in the correct um, context, this market shift can be good enough to take an execution, right? Uh, uh, same thing with this market shift. Same thing with, a, with, a, with this example, this market shift, right? Those are market shifts uh, from Phantom Trading. I used to trade with Phantom Trading strategy. Um, it's called soft structure. I don't really use that concept anymore because for me personally, it doesn't really make that much sense for me to use it, right? It's overall from what I've learned from ICT. And on the first few videos, you can see how one candle that um, I do, I probably should have had a better thing. But as an example, this high is really one candle alone. So the break of that high created by the retracement of this candle and this one is already enough, right? And as you, if you do watch ICT's video, you can see how he uses candles like that to, count, to be called a market shift. So that is really all that I wanted to actually touch or go over or go over regarding market structure right i just wanted you to understand what's a market shift right and again it's when the direction changes when we're again talking about lower lows lower highs changing to higher highs and higher lows or vice versa of course now we're going to jump onto fair value gaps and as both previous concepts i'm not going to give a strong concept definition so what i'll say is the next from what i understood learning from ict the market the market the algorithm really that moves the market was designed to efficiently deliver price action from one point to the other to generate liquidity to manipulate retail minded traders into doing the opposite direction the market will actually go and of course more than that but the main thing out of this is efficiently right so there are moments where the market due to an influx of liquidity, news driven event, or simply other reasons on which price isn't efficiently delivered. Efficiently delivered price action will be the market moving for price from A to B, giving equal chances to both sellers and buyers to participate in the market. But as an example, when there's a lot of aggression in a move, when there's clear displacement happening, gaps are created where the market wasn't efficiently delivered. And these are levels that price can trade back up into to assure that efficiency. So these fair value gaps will be the areas where we'll either look for the opportunities or actually take the opportunities right away, again, depending on the context. Fair value gaps, from my point of view, are indication of a strong potential direction. So therefore, 
a fair value gap created bullishly after a run on sell side liquidity could be a really good confluence to expect higher prices. See what I did there? See how we are already putting together fair value gaps and the run on sell side liquidity? What else can we put together? A market shift. What happens if we see a run on sell side liquidity, a market shift, and a fair value gap being created? Those are three things that we have in our favor that we can now say, okay, so there are strong indications that price could continue to go into this or that direction. Also, the fact that if we have analyzed with this exact same concept, the daily chart, and we believe that price is actually going to continue to go higher, and we see these three things together working in that exact same direction, that is just more and more confluences for us to believe that from this point, we could be looking for higher prices. This is why it is important to stack everything together. It's not just a run on the high, a run on the low. So where do we have to look for them? For about like talking, right? Where are they supposed to show up, which are actually useful and when? So this, all of this actually seemed complicated, but it, it's not really. Where do we look for them? After a run of stops. When do we look for them? During a kill zone. We'll talk about kill zones later. Which are actually useful? The ones that happen while a market shift occurs or before one. This will also uh, be shown in the blueprint of what we actually look for. Right? So just a little bit of a diagram or a drawing of exactly what I look for in the market. Now, let's see a couple of examples in the charts. First of all, we're going to see how they're actually created. As you can see, we have price going lower. Let's suppose we have a previous candle that, as you can see, this week, the week from the previous bearish candle, mitigated this other week right here. Right, This high is mitigating this exact same low, which means that there is no gap between quotes. Now, on this candle, right, we have it's four by three candles. The first one, Right? It's just a candle, has a wick, a body. It doesn't matter which color it is, right? We just have a candle. Then we have the second candle, which is one of the most important ones, which causes the space between this candle's low and potentially the next candle's high. So as you can see, we have first candle is not really that important, but the second candle creates the space between one and three, right? And the third simply should leave this gap from this week all the way up to this, all the way down in this case to this week. Right? This is what's called a fair value gap. This is what ICT says that it's not efficiently. Why it's not efficiently delivered? Theoretically, because price was aggressively going lower, that it never offered price to the buyers. It offered sell, 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 sell throughout the entire move of this candle, but never gave an opportunity to the buyers. It never traded this from this high to this low. It never offered price going higher on a buy side, per se. So theoretically, what we should see is price going higher, filling in this gap before actually going lower. But as you can see, it doesn't do that. It continues with the trend, right? And leaves this gap, which is again theoretically um, inefficiently delivered price action. We have this is the exact same example. It's just that as an example, we can have a bullish candle that then this happens and then this happens. Why do I show it? Because well, we have three bull bearish candles here, and then maybe you see it like this, and you say maybe that doesn't really work, but it does, right? But of course, again, we need to see this gap created, otherwise. There's not, it's not there, right? It's just not there. So that's the bearish example and the bullish example. We'll actually see it later. And as you can see, this is what we are theoretically expecting. If why, why do we expect price to actually trade back into that fair value gap? To between quotes, fix the issue, fix the inefficiency on the market. So it trades back into it, fills it, and continues going lower. But as an example, this is something that I, um, had to wrap my head around because at the beginning I was expecting price to fill it completely. It doesn't necessarily have to fill it, not at all, as there will be cases where price goes further than the fair value gap. Ideally, it doesn't go above the first candle's high. 
um, sometimes it barely mitigates by a tick, literally by a tick, and then continues with the trend, meaning that the fair value gap or the entry would have worked out. And it is what it is. So we do have to ready to be ready about that or be ready for that, right? And this simply is uh, the, the exact same example, right? This too, just with the theoretical, theoretical uh, continuation. Now we'll look at the bullish example, which is the exact same thing. First candle, not important. Second candle creates the space. Third candle doesn't mitigate previous candles or first candles high. Leaving this space, exact same thing on this one. Again, bearish or bullish doesn't really matter. Thing is that this gap has to be created between candle one and three. Second just causes the space and ideally we see this exact same scenario right um, we'll look at some example on the charts and as you can see this one actually was on today so you can check it on your charts as well from wednesday october 5th right um yeah that's just just if, if you want to check it out at 8:45 new york so price is goes lower retraces continues going lower and as you can see we have the bullish candle so candle one candle two creates the space candle three leaves that space open and see how price actually comes back up fills the entire thing before actually continuing it lower what else do we have here we have a random buy side liquidity aggression lower we'll talk about uh displacement later on fair value gap price mitigates it doesn't fill it as you can see it doesn't fill it and continues going lower so the question might rise, right, about what's, why is this not candle Y, one, and then two, and then three? Why is this not candle one, two, and three? It's not about putting a number on, onto each candle, it's about seeing this. I don't count the candles anymore. I don't even think about that. If I see that this candle is here, the low is there, second candle does this, and then the third doesn't fill in that, I understand that there is a fair value gap in that. I don't care that this is one, two, and three. I understand that there's a fair value gap in here, and that's all that I really need to do. There's another one on this. This is as while this candle is two, it is also candle one, two, and three. We also have a fair value gap from this high to this low. See how it works out? So why didn't I draw that one? Because this one looks better and it is respected better, basically. And it is a bit higher, which, as we'll discuss on premium discount, it is a better positioned fair value gap, right? So just keep that in mind. Also, here, exact same thing. What do we have as an extra, as an example? <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are not looking, we're not asking ourselves which high and which low do we want to have as a random buy side or sell side liquidity. We don't care about that. We care about what happens later. We have a run buy side liquidity. What happens later? We see displacement, which again, we'll discuss in a minute. A fair value gap created, right? And price trace back into it. Filling in or fixing the mistake or the inefficiency to then continue it going lower. These are fair value gaps. These gaps on where price theoretically, again, I don't really understand the concept, right? Because... If you think about it the next way, if you go to a one second, three second, five second, 15 seconds time frame, price maybe in here it did go a bit lower to then continue, a bit lower, a bit higher, sorry, to then continue lower, a bit higher to then continue lower. So this gap theoretically in the lower time frame doesn't really exist. The reason why I, I was like, doesn't really make that much sense. So uh, as I don't really understand the concept, I understand how they work and how they're created and how we can use them. Reason why, uh, on the disclaimer at the beginning, per se, I, I exactly said that I don't really understand how one, some of these concepts work, but I do understand that how putting them, putting these together, we can actually try to be profitable in the market, right? So, random buy side liquidity, market shift, fair value gap, lower, right? These are fair value gaps. What else do we have here? When a direction is set, price tends to create these fair value gaps as it is sh as it shows aggression when going in the direction it desires. Causing price, price to be delivered inefficiently, generating these gaps that we can expect price to try and fix between quotes and for us to try and take advantage of them. Price is going lower, fair value gap fills it, continues lower. This is the fair value gap that we just saw. This is another fair value gap that we just saw. Another one here mitigates it, continues going lower, and so on and so forth. 
we have multiple occasions that show up. Many, many Fribali caps are created. But of course, do keep in mind that this is not a 100% thing. These can show up. These can appear at all times, but that doesn't mean necessarily that, that they all will be mitigated or that they will all uh, do their job. <clears throat> As an example, there's a fair valley gap from candle 1, 2, and 3. There's a fair valley gap from this high to this low. There's a fair valley gap in here, in here. As an example, uh, no, I'm not going to say that. It's going to be a lot of a, a lot of an explanation that I wanted that I have to do that I can't do right now. So, high, low, fair valley gap. Is it respected? Yeah. Does it cause a move lower? Yeah. But then it fails, right? Doesn't mean that it was a failed fair valley gap. This is a daily chart. So no, my opinion, it is not a failed fair valley gap. Mitigate goes higher. We have that one. We have this one. Pretty good fair valley gap. It's not mitigated. It mitigates this one. Continues going lower. Mitigates. Oh, the, sorry. No, it doesn't mitigate it. We have one here. What happened before? Run and buy sell liquidity. This high took this and this high. Keep in mind that it is the daily chart. Goes aggressively lower. Fair value gap here. Doesn't mitigate it. Fair value gap here. Doesn't mitigate it. It doesn't necessarily mean that each of these fair value gap will be mitigated. This one creates one there. Mitigates the lower one. Continues lower. We have one, two, and three. Which one did it mitigate? It? The, the extreme one. This, this one mitigated the, the lower one. The lower one. The lower one right can we do some background check and say okay so based on this we can go for the first the, the last or the, the most extreme one mm, i wouldn't do that i mean you can do it do it if you want i i don't think it's really worth it aggression higher fair valley gap uh fair, there's candle one two three fair valley gap one two three fair valley gap one two three fair valley gap mitigates this one starts going higher again one two three fair valley gap Mitigates it here, mitigates it again here. What does it do? Create more fair value gaps that cause aggression here, but then it fails. Another fair value gap in this goes aggressively higher. Fair value gap in this mitigates it, so it, continues going higher, right? And more and more examples, as you can see on, okay, uh, as you can see on this on this one, right? Even here, run and sell, sell liquidity, aggression higher, market shift above that high, fair value gap, fair value gap, fair value gap, fair value gap. Uh, for Bali Gap, for Bali Gap, I don't think this were respected. I don't know what price it today after session. This is a one hour chart. You can see how it goes higher, higher for Bali Gaps, for Bali Gaps, and so on. And all more for Bali Gaps here. Change its direction for Bali Gap. Nix it, right? It doesn't fill it. It doesn't go to the 50%. Just taps it and starts going lower. Well, not starts going lower. Continues going lower in this case. So that's, or those are for Bali Gaps. It is, the, I'm not sure, no, I think that liquidity is the most important uh, concept that I use on a daily basis. But fair value gaps, of course, are the areas, again, where we're going to be looking for price to reach into to then give us the lower time frame opportunities. But when we're going to take a lower time frame opportunity, that also has um, the fair value gap concept in it, right? So... Fair value gaps are really important, are the base of our execution, but the base of our analysis is market structure and liquidity. But again, fair value gaps happen everywhere. Liquidity runs happen everywhere. Market shifts happen everywhere. It all depends on the context. Context in, uh, in Forex is everything. Let's talk about displacement. So I'm going to use something ICT mentioned multiple times on multiple videos. I actually saw it the other day on a, uh, I think it was a Mark Maker video. Uh, thing is that if you picture a kid's pool, right, it's a tiny pool, maybe 1.5 meters on all sides. If a kid was to jump on it, you'll see water being displaced, being moved. So probably some of it falling out of the pool as well. Now, on the other hand, if you picture the exact same pole, but a 4,000 kilos elephant jumps onto that exact same pole, most of it, if not all, will, would actually fly up and fall out of the pool. On Forex, that's exactly what we look for, this, this kind of displacement, an aggressive move where there's no doubt a 4,000 kilos elephant has jumped on the pool. But what does it prove and why is it necessary per se? 
Now, I wouldn't consider it actually necessary entirely, but definitely something that indicates that the fact that, as an example, we've traded below sell side liquidity and then we see displacement higher is a clear indication that we could see price, well, higher prices from here. Also, when displacement takes place, it tends to cause these for value gaps, as price is being quite aggressive and there isn't enough time to deliver it efficiently. The reason why this whole thing kind of goes together, or why on step two I call it displacement instead of creation of fair value gaps. But as an example, we have this little bit of price action on where price was going a bit higher, then lower with some kind of aggression. Then you can see how these couple of candles are small, couple, t some tiny weeks. So lack of impulse, lack of aggression, large weeks, etc. Now on the other hand, we jump onto this where we see aggression for value gaps being created, it's clearly quite decisive on going lower, pretty much very tiny or small weeks or non or non-existent news, uh, not news, weeks, rush kind of rushing to get somewhere, right? And or as an example, as if something has just been mitigated. And the exact same example, bullishly. Now, this is, is displacement, right? When you see a couple candles, or maybe just one or two candles, they're just going aggressively to one point to the other without really retracing or slowing down, without leaving that many weeks, just going aggressively higher. Now, if we look into a couple of um, chart examples, we see this. Quite an aggressive move, right? Just two candles, right? But it is pulling away quite aggressively. And as you can see, it does create a fair value gap that price here mitigates. Now we have a run on buy sell liquidity. What do we see here? Aggression lower. Well, I was going to, to, say, to say quite aggressive, but a very aggressive move lower that creates this displacement that we're seeing. Also, what does it create? The fair value gap that we were discussing earlier, right? That's why displacement and fair value gaps kind of go together. Uh, when the direction is set, displacement towards that direction is nothing but expected to occur. So you can see here the direction is set bearish, even run on buy sell liquidity, right? Above those highs. Displacement, time bit of retracement, displacement, retracement, displacement, retracement, or range, aggression, and so on and so forth. And here, as an example, we have clear aggression, even generates a fair value gap, which sadly isn't mitigated there, I think, not sure. Little bit of an aggression ranges not enough impulse on these uh tiny impulses that you're seeing right it doesn't really do much per se retraces there is some displacement if we look at it here but why did i not well i could have pointed it out right because we're looking at just displacement not in favor of the trend or anything but this this is definitely displacement as well this move higher in my opinion doesn't really have that much impulse this candle alone is a good amount of displacement in my opinion quite aggressive this is a nice impulse but as you can see, there are large wicks on all of these candles, which is not ideal to see when we're supposedly seeing that displacement. The first two candles, maybe, but the rest kind of difficult. Then this, this pretty big candle, not a couple of big candles, and so on and so forth. That's displacement. It's not something um, difficult to understand. It's not, it's not something... Um, it's not something difficult, right? Something simple to understand. But again, everything needs a little bit of context because it's it doesn't mean that we're going to be selling because we see this displacement or buying because we see this displacement or this one, right? We have to understand where price could cause these kind of moves and why we can take advantage of those, right? Otherwise, there's really not much that we can do if we start just buying and selling because we see aggression in price action, right? That's displacement, or that's the way that I understand it and the way that I like to use it. Premium and discount metrics is very simple to understand, and it's simply using metrics, Fibonacci mostly, to try to determine where to buy and where to sell. It's the old buy low, sell high type of thing, but in a more technical ways, uh, way, actually. We always want to look for selling opportunities at a premium and buying opportunities at a discount. And of course, keep in mind that this is one of the last things that we actually look for. This is literally when we have the displacement, the market shift, the fair value gap and everything, right? Usually I like applying this to know which fair value gaps are of use and which are not. But 
at the same time that's actually fixed but by other metrics that we use provided as of course by ICT now this box that you see is simply Fibonacci right the the, the, the line that is literally on the middle is the 50% retracement and what do we have here this is an impulse right retraces as you can see this is the 50 goes farther away than the 50 impulse retracement doesn't get to the 50 impulse to this low it does get to the 50 impulse to this low from this high to this low does get to the 50 as well as you can see aggression lower retraces 50 percent aggression lower retraces 50 percent aggression lower retraces I, I think it missed it by a few pips because keep in mind that this is the daily chart actually the weekly chart okay and basically just retracements up to uh equilibrium right 50 percent is the equilibrium because it's not premium it's not discount it's literally equilibrium between the two so is it necessary yeah, i kind of came to a little bit of a conclusion that it is and it isn't because it's a little bit of just understanding what's a good area to sell and what's a good area to buy right just keep on looking at this examples right just impulse retraces to 50 impulse retraces to 50 impulse retraces to 50 continues going lower and this one actually is missed it's not necessary as you can see on this one it's not necessary for us to get to the 50 before actually continuating with the move right uh but ideally it does get to the 50 before doing anything else uh then a couple of buying and selling scenarios right sell 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 uh then it changes the direction as you can see it does mitigate the 50 causes a move lower but then changes the direction and then 50 misses the 50 mitigates the 50 mitigates the 50 and so on and so forth so premium and discount is again something really simple something that we give it importance in certain uh situations as an example on the daily chart when we've had an impulse i do like x not expecting but waiting for the for price to mitigate at least the 50 percent of the retracement before actually causing that continuation and if it doesn't happen then ideally we're not seeing sales just yet but as an example on a five minute 50 minute chart we might not really apply that much because as we'll discuss when we talk about putting it all together um in the blueprint of what we look for you'll see that we don't really need it in in the moment that we are executing or looking for fair value gaps to give us the lower time frame opportunities right but that is that is basically premium and discount metrics the daily bias is a it's not a concept first of all but it's something really important it is not in my opinion it is not necessary as we'll discuss later i don't think it's necessary but i do believe that it is something that can allow us to have a little bit of a extra percentage in our favor and or extra percentage in the probability kind i mean right so it's not a concept as i mentioned it's just the direction and how to determine it we've kind of already gone through right but there are two things that i want to mention about this here now, first of all, we're going to talk about a video recommendation by ICT, which is this one. ICT Essentials to Trading the Daily Bias. Um, and there's another one about the weekly bias, which is also, in my opinion, important that you can give it a give it a shot, right? It's really lovely couple of videos where he just goes pretty much straight to the point, as you probably know if you've seen ICT's videos. He either talks a lot, rambles a lot, and I do I do understand that that can be a little bit... Um, a little bit overwhelming right because you have maybe half of the videos are pure content and pure teachings and then the other half is just talking about different things uh but overall these two videos i do of, of what i do remember they are pretty um pretty straight to the point right i did watch the daily bias i think a, a week ago or something like that. so now on the other hand right um these are the concepts that i use to determine it first of all liquidity as mentioned before, if price just took a good amount of sales and liquidity, it would likely at least retrace or completely change directions depending on the major trend, right? Because the daily time frame is not even the biggest time frame. Remember that. So, or maybe, of course, it just took sales and liquidity. It will go to the other extreme, seeking the buy sell liquidity. 
Now, um, also, if price is going to a certain direction quite aggressively, I can look into which is the nearest low or high as it's likely heading to that liquidity. So if price is uh, going, well, actually, we'll, we'll, we'll see the examples later. Now to Fibonacci, going back to market structure, the market impulses, retraces, consolidations, impulses again, and so on and so forth. Understanding that we've had an impulse higher that took buy side liquidity, and it's now either ranging or starting to retrace, you can place a Fibonacci on the last um, impulse higher in this case, and potentially see where price is likely to go up or down to before actually continuing with the uh, already set trend by this point. Again, basically what we just saw on the on this, right? If we look at this, well, that's a weekly chart. As you can see, price retraces up to the 50, up to the 50, misses the 50 by a few pips, up to the 50, now up to the 50. We'll see if it actually continues going lower or not. The thing is that uh, we can understand with Fibonacci where price can actually stop or we'll look for something to stop and continue with the trend again already set. Premium and discount, Fibonacci, in a more technical way, we're going to be seeing... So, placing Fibonacci like that, we're basically going to be looking into where to buy, where to sell, and just based on premium and discount again, buying low, selling high, right? And last but not least, Fibonacci gaps. This is something somewhat this depending on the context provided by 2 and 3. If there are Fibonacci gaps on good premium and discount, and we're seeing a retracement, believing that the market will continue going lower, as an example, from this Fibonacci gap, it's not a bad idea, right? Because if we are seeing that price has caused now we'll go into examples here price has caused an impulse it retraces mitigates the 50 percent there's a daily fair value gap in here right it takes buy side liquidity starts going aggressively lower creates a fair value gap and creates displacement i have many reasons to believe why price could go lower from this fair value gap right first of all and maybe even for from the one that was created here so let's look at this example reasons why we'd expect price uh sorry reasons we'd expect price from this point to continue lower uh one previously the trend was bearish was bearish without much of a doubt just creating lower lows and lower highs for a couple of months probably even years already two price just ran above buy side liquidity three we can see clear displacement occurring soon after even a mark shift here that i forgot to mention right and four creation of a fair value gap shows aggression on price action in favor of that expected trend again it retraced up to a premium price right because the 50 percent is in between this low and this high somewhere around these areas right somewhere around these areas we have a daily fair value gap in here as well and of course well the buys the liquidity that we already discussed multiple reasons to believe why price could continue going lower what do we have in here as an example price goes higher takes some buys the liquidity Aggressively lower, fair value gaps, mitigates that, continues going lower. Fair value gap, mitigates that here, takes buy side liquidity, aggression lower, another fair value gap, mitigates that, continues lower, another fair value gap, and now it could continue going lower. This is today's price action, right? That's why I put the, the question marks. Why am I showing you this? And why do I want you to understand what I'm trying to say here? With this, what can we really do with daily bias? With the daily bias, or the, of course, this is all potential. With the potential daily bias, we can enter the market for a week or just the day itself and understand that there's a high probability of price just going lower. By knowing that price is likely going lower, all that we really have to do is look for a random buy side liquidity, displacement lower that causes a market shift and creates a fair value gap, and then for price to trade back into that fair value gap and for us to look lower prices. See how it all starts to um, combine together in a very indir indirect and at the same time direct way. How we need each of these concepts and why we can apply them the way that they do, that we do, sorry. That is exactly what I do. So the reason why I say that the daily buys might not be that necessary is because if you saw one of the videos recently that I did that was called plus 20R in four weeks, this is how. If you see that video, I apply the five steps without really caring what the direction was. I did take losses, 
that could have been avoided by understanding that prices theoretically going lower, but also ended up in a pretty good profit without really giving, uh, not giving a damn, uh, without really caring about the daily bias. But the daily bias and understanding where price is likely to go really does help us a lot. Right? It makes things a lot easier, right? So, yeah. And also, one more example, which is from ICT himself, from the video itself. As you can see, what do we have? Our high, our low. Goes above this high, takes a buy of liquidity, ranges a little. I don't know if this is a level that we had to the left. Then, aggressively lower, takes sell side liquidity, retraces. There's a fair value gap in there. As you can see, it doesn't mitigate it. Aggression lower, takes sell side liquidity below that low retraces, mitigates for belly gap, aggressively lower, more sales of liquidity, more sales of liquidity, look at the low that was actually taken, right? Takes the sales of liquidity, starts going aggressively higher, so it took sell side, right? Took sell side, goes to buy side. Took buy side, about that high, goes to sell side. Took sell side, right? Maybe went to buy side with the fact that it traded about that high, in my opinion, if we don't see it from the time frame itself, I don't really like it. Right, goes aggressively lower, took, took sell side liquidity. In my opinion, we do have a good buy side liquidity above that high. So sell side to buy side. After buy side, it goes to sell side again. In this case, it does go to sell side liquidity again. And then immediately changes the direction to buy side liquidity. This is a lovely example because it shows how the market takes from one side to the other. And sure, in this example, it is somewhat ranging. Right? It's not the ideal type of price action. But overall, it shows exactly what I'm trying to picture and what ICT tries to show in this video. Right, How um, the market moves from, from one liquidity side to the other liquidity side. Right, And how we can take advantage of it. Because after the run of this sell side liquidity, below that though, we can understand the price at least can retrace. Up to what? Well, we do have a fair value gap in here. We have the buy sell liquidity here. We have multiple reasons to believe price could go above that high, could go up to this fair belly gap, taking this buy sell liquidity. The multiple things that price could have done to take buy sell liquidity before continuing in lower, right? In this case, it decided to go all the way up here, took the sell side, took the buy side, and now, well, on this example, this is where it was. Where it could have gone uh, later, maybe continue with the trend, right? As it is higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low, took sell side, higher high. My opinion that's something that could have happened. I didn't check honestly, and we could, but I do believe this is from a couple of years ago, so uh it'd take some time to find it. But we could find it overall. Um that's the concepts that I use, and that's what ICT uses, right? Uh I like putting things together because it gives me more confluences, run on buy side liquidity, for body gap, displacement, market shift, more for body gaps, and so on and so forth. It's really good to have a direction that we can understand for this day or for the other. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that about the daily bias. This is all that I have for now. And next thing is putting it all together, which is basically trying to understand how all of this many concepts we discussed go pretty well together, which, as I've been explaining in the past few minutes, um, I ha kind of already have right but for now that's all and we'll jump now on to okay let's do a short talk about power of three it's a very simple concept and this also goes with the market protraction concept taught by ict through core content core contents i think it's, it's called the, the most recent videos the power of three i have a little bit of an issue explaining the first because i do not know what it actually is I probably should watch the video on which he actually explained this again. Um, but I don't really think the first one really matters that much. Or at least I think so. Maybe it does matter a lot. And that's why sometimes it just doesn't work out for me. But the power of three is where the market opens, whether it is through midnight or at 8.30, trades to a direction that is actually the opposite that we'll see through that session that is being opened that is starting what i mean with that is sometimes you can see through midnight midnight new york market opens trades higher maybe takes buy sell liquidity in the meantime and then starts trading lower and that happens throughout the entire london pre new york and then you see maybe 7 a.m right that's the kill zone it starts trading against the trend 
a 30 opens let's suppose this is a 30 that's awful i always had issues drawing an eight and this is my mouse hand a 30 and it starts also trading against the trend right so this is the open trades higher and then actually continues going lower right also took some buy sell liquidity in the meantime right and then continues lower so how can we use this and why is it important because as an example what happens through this the market opens and it starts trading higher that's the manipulation part that's where the market makes people believe that it will go either higher or lower when the market's intention or the algorithm intentions are actually exactly the opposite the market needs liquidity to move how does it create how does it create liquidity by tricking people by manipulating people into believing that the market will either be bullish or bearish when it's actually going to be the exact opposite that's the manipulation part and the distribution part is really just the move on favor of the trend favor of price um of the algorithm direction right so if the manipulation was higher theoretically we could see lower prices later on and the same thing with a30 usually we see both of this on sync right so a 30 opens trace higher to then continue lower just as midnight did sometimes that doesn't really happen trace lower and then it actually changes the direction and this was wrong this was right it doesn't really matter thing is that we use it or i use it personally just to say i'm expecting bearish price action a 30 opens trace higher making people believe that it's actually going to be a bullish day when it's it's really not right so that's the way that I use it. And let's look at the bullish example, right? Because I I love the various examples because for me, they're easy. The bullish example is I do have a little bit of an issue with it, but it doesn't really matter. Bullish example is this is midnight. It's trading. Starts going against the trend. Takes some sells at liquidity. Doesn't necessarily need to, but if it does, then even better. And then direction changes and trades bullish through the entire session, right? Through the entire London session. 8.30 opens. Trades against the trend. Maybe takes some sell side. And we get price going down. So this is New York price action. As you can see, it trades lower, then goes higher. This is midnight's open, trades lower, then higher. Why or what does it also create? On midnight, the daily candle opens here, trades a bit lower, right? This is the week of the, of the candle, and then goes higher, right? So if we go to, let me actually open a chart. If we go to, to charts, the the daily the daily charts on this is actually with other time it's gmt time i believe but here's the thing the candle opens trace a bit lower than higher right if we went through each day uh, i should have opened the other charts not this ones we go to a daily chart it's previous week analysis when i need this uh okay so market opens trace lower then higher then lower right it does manipulate people into believing that they could this could be bullish because you trace about that open but it ends up not being a 30 opens happens here as an example in this case midnight kind of worked out new york definitely didn't uh on this one here as you can see it trace a bit higher doesn't take buys that liquidity trace higher then continues lower uh, a 30 is here another one right opens trace higher continues going lower i think well, i wasn't going to show examples but well since the market is giving us some might as well take advantage of them trace higher goes lower let's see the 30 open this is thursday trade so yeah this is the this is the open as you can see trace higher then aggressively lower a bit higher right not that much but that was on thursday's trade look at this Midnight opens, trades a bit lower, then aggressively higher. This Monday and Tuesday were really aggressive days price action. Reason why that could be the case. That could be the case why they, it was as aggressive as it was. This rambles a bit, goes aggressively lower, takes some sense of liquidity, and then turns bullish. Let's see the 830 open if it did anything for us. 830 is on this bearish candle. It does trade a bit below, but at the, in the moment, it's not really that visible, that noticeable. I actually counted this as a bullish manipulation to then go lower. Also, bullish manipulation to then go lower, right? So that's why the power of three concept is really just an extra confidence. If we are expecting bearish prices and the power of three does help us with that, then great, right? Because we can we can say, cool, um, we have that in our advantage, right? Here, it trades aggressively higher, then aggressively lower, ranges through the net, run net through the rest of the session really doesn't do that much let's see here here price action opens trace lower aggressively then aggressively higher let's see a 30 opens on this one trace aggressively lower aggressively higher right so you have multiple days for example it worked out quite lovely right it was a couple of nice days that 
by that concept alone, you could have known the direction, right? You could have known the direction. So that's a borrow three concept, right? And again, we're expecting this to happen for the week for the week to be created. And ideally we join in here to take advantage of this entire thing, right? Doesn't necessarily mean that we need to trade just there, but yeah. But yeah. Now on the other hand, market market protraction is a move, an impulse that happens at specific times. An impulse that happens at 7 a.m., at 2 a.m., at midnight New York, at 8.30 a.m., at 9.30 a.m., right? Moves that happen because they are time sensitive. And they kind of go along, along with the power of three because it's about manipulation. Ideally, at 8.30, we're going to see a move against the trend. At uh, 7, we're going to see a move the trend against the trend, right? Just tricking, manipulating uh, retail traders or retail-minded traders into believing that we're going to have either a bullish or a bearish session when we're actually going to have the exact opposite. This is a really good really good concept that, that I use daily. Uh, most of the times in the background, I don't really write it on my charts most of the times. Um, but it's a really good concept. It's really simple and uh, honestly powerful concept if we were to apply it correctly and if we have the daily biases in our advantage this is really a really good confirmation for us to use that's power of three and market protraction now we're going to talk about uh i don't know but let's see kill zones you have from two to five is london kill zone and from seven to ten you have the new york kill zone that's based on ICT's teachings, and what I've actually done is use it up to, to the kill, so the kills on a trade up to 11, right? Don't ask me specifically what a kill zone is, I just understand that what ICT teaches is that the kill zone, these kill zones, is where, where and when we're looking for opportunities to show up, where the moves are going to happen the most, right? So... From if you are going to be trading London from 2 to 5, do keep in mind as an example, I haven't back tested London, so I have no idea if the 5 steps work exactly the same. But Friday, now that we're here, right? We do have run and buy side liquidity, right? Market shift on that low, or well, this low, and then a fair value gap in here, price trades into it. And even if we would have traded it with this fair value gap already, we do get a pretty good entry that works out through the entirety of uh, Friday, right? Well, yeah, I mean, probably would have targeted this low alone. Um, going further than that, well, maybe this couple of lows, these two equal lows, I don't know. Thing is that that's the kill zone. That's when we are looking for trades between 7 and 10, mostly, by ICT. 7 to 11, for me, has been fine, so do keep that in mind. On the other hand, I do trade only from 8.30 and ahead. And by 10.30, if nothing really looks okay if or even by 10 if i don't see like the price is ranging or not much has happened i'm probably leaving the desktop and just studying not not studying sorry just doing some things around the house maybe i have to go out and buy some things for for lunch there are multiple things that i do through the morning that uh whenever the market is already done for me personally i just stop uh stop trading right completely or just go outside go run around the house basically and on my phone i'm checking what's going on and if i see step one as an example happening and it looks good then i probably will give it a chance and see if it actually shows something after 11 unless there's as an example if we are already on step three or we are waiting for step four to happen by 11 exactly 11 i might think about taking the opportunity but if after 11 i'm waiting for step one or even step two I'm likely just avoiding that little bit of price action and allowing the market to do whatever it wants and completely miss out on it, right? I really don't care after that time. I am already busy with other things around the house and I just don't want to force opportunities. So it's better to just avoid it completely. And that is pretty much it about kill zones. Now we get to the fun part, right? We get to the point where we've already gone through the concepts and basically we need to understand how and when to apply all of these concepts that we've gone through. Right, and from my point of view, there are two ways to approach the market with these concepts that I've uh, tried to explain in this video, and one is by understanding and utilizing the daily and weekly bias, and another one will be by 
just analyzing the day's price action and applying what I call the five steps. Now, um, we'll do just the first, as the second will be the same, but removing the daily chart analysis. So you're the daily chart analysis, right? So you're probably asking yourself, how to use all of this theoretical stuff on the charts? How can I actually find these concepts on the charts? How can you use them? You might not know where to start or what to do. So I'll try to illustrate as well as I can what I do daily for you to be able to know what to do and what to look for. Now, of course, don't don't expect to understand to understand it and be able to apply it right away. You're not going to be able to find profitable trades as soon after you finish watching this video. Now, what you can do is what I'll leave at the end of the video, which will be a section called what to do right now. And that should really be all you need to to do to be able to start progressing forward, right? Not trading, but progressing. And the first thing we're going to jump on as we're going to look at it from the daily bias type of analysis, we're going to start with the daily bias. I already uh talked about the daily bias what can we expect how can we analyze the daily chart and all of that and uh basically this is the first thing that we'll analyze the daily chart we need to understand on a higher perspective where price could reach into the next few days or maybe even weeks and as as i mentioned earlier right on the daily bias um section we'll use concepts such as a fair value gaps liquidity runs liquidity itself and displacement mostly so now how do we do that and we'll look into multiple examples seven if i'm correct or well, eight apparently and the uh, first one is this chart right we'll look specifically at this but let's look back let's see what we have before we have price going a lower high lower low higher high taken by sell liquidity aggressive move lower we have a fair value gap that price trades we have buy sell liquidity above this high above this high little bit of a range, move lower, retracement, move lower, retracement, took a little bit of buy side liquidity, aggressive move lower. We also have a variability gap in here, which price trades into, mitigates, uh, sorry, takes buy side liquidity and starts going aggressively lower, generating one and two variability gaps. Again, remember that from my point of view, variability gaps show a strong trend. And the fact that, it, that they are created after a run on buy side liquidity is an example shows that there is a really good bearish potential to look for, right? So it continues going lower. There's a fair value gap in here. So you can see we have a pretty aggressive move. And what can we expect after price has moved aggressively or not necessarily aggressively, but has moved to one direction? We can expect for it to retrace some point or another. Now, of course, we're not going to say price has pushed a lot. So I'm going to look for buying opportunities in here, trying to get to 50% of this high and this low not nor either so we're not going to be looking for buys here either we're just understanding the price till this point has caused a pretty aggressive move and now we could see a retracement or maybe it continues going lower and we see a retracement later in this case right it starts to retrace as you can see and we can expect the 50 percent to be mitigated stops pretty close to it doesn't get to it as you can see there's a fair value gap in here price trace into it and there are there is a bullish momentum, right? Will we trade that? We will use it in our advantage if we are expecting the 50% to be mitigated somewhat soon. And if we do see bullish, um, well, yeah, bullish confluences through the day to buy, we could definitely do that on this day, this day, this day, and maybe even this one, right? As we are expecting the 50% to be mitigated, maybe just going about that high. So, on that, even though we are we are against the trend, we're using the fact that theoretically price can retrace and should retrace up to the 50% before continuing lower. And in this case, it would have been a really lovely analysis. What else do we have to be buying for, from here, from this fair value gap? A little bit of a couple of lows, right? Sell side liquidity, takes that, mitigates fair value gap, and probably lower time from confluences. Now, what's happening on the verge side, which as you can see, it has been quite bearish already. We have multiple months of price action that have been bearish. As you can see, it kind of ranged, goes aggressively higher, takes buy side liquidity, still within this fair value gap right above the 50 percent at that point and what do we see as soon after us those this high specifically is taken as by sell liquidity aggression lower causes a market shift on this low right and creates fair value gap in here fair value gap in here as well 
So what do we have? What what are we going to do now? That's that I believe is the question. What are we going to do now? If we are in this exact day, well, this day has just finished, and then the next candle is started to be started to be created, basically. Can we? What are we going to expect for price to do? We're going to expect for price to continue lower, maybe and hopefully mitigating this very valley gap for us to be basically able to take advantage of these. Of this parabolic gap, right? As we know, price tends to come back to parabolic gaps before moving on with the trend. And this candle right here could be a pretty good example or pretty good opportunity for us to do that, right? So expecting for price to mitigate this and then continue lower is definitely uh, something that we can expect simply, right? So let's go on to the next one. And as you can see, this is the exact, exact same example, just price mitigated that and started going lower. What do we have after it mitigates that? Again, aggression, more for valley gaps, and everything. We can see that what are we going to target? Well, ideally, we would have, we could have targeted this low, right? Which is kind of this is a range from basically this low to this high. As you can see, price maintains itself for a couple of weeks, probably three or four weeks. And then it takes all of that by sell liquidity. So the sell side liquidity from this low is definitely something that we can aim for. So after we we've, we've taken this buy sell liquidity and we are up here. Can we expect price to go at least below that low? Definitely. It probably could base ourselves simply on the fact that we've just taken buy sell liquidity and price is likely to seek that sell side liquidity. What else do we have? Well, this low here, if this entire impulse, well, yeah, if this entire impulse is now retracing, and this is just a retracement of that, the continuation of the trend should take the low. Right, the lower low, the most recent lower low in the daily chart. So can we expect this to be a lower high, a lower low, then this lower high, potentially a lower high, we don't know at that point, to then take this lower take this lower low? Definitely. So what does that create for us? The fact that we've just taken buy side liquidity, the fact that we have this as a potential bearish target, and this one is a potential bearish target, what can we do through this day, this day, this day, and this day? Each and every single one of these days, we're going to be looking for bearish opportunities, for selling opportunities, right? We are expecting the market to give us opportunities to go down to this low. Why would we expect that? Because we're looking for sell side liquidity. Price just took a good amount of buy side liquidity, comes from mitigating the daily for value gap, retraced 50% of the most recent impulse. So why would we not expect? price to take sell side liquidity now of course so keep in mind it's not necessarily a hundred percent thing as an example price could have gone lower right and then stopped around this exact same levels and started going higher maybe taking some buy side liquidity maybe taking this high making that a little bit of a longer right impulse correction correction and then impulse to finally take the low at some point or maybe a reversal that could have changed the trend for a couple of i don't know weeks months who knows Right? So it's not a 100% thing, but we do have the confidence that if we're seeing price continuing lower, we can definitely expect price to get down to this low. So that will be one of the first examples. Then we have this exact same thing, right? What happens after sell side liquidity has been taken? It's a tricky scenario in this case, right? We don't have enough impulse, there's no displacement, no creation of fair value gaps, another run on sell side liquidity. So what can we really expect on this? This one is complicated. But what's the thing? When you see a trend like this, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, well, actually, this is not lower low, lower low, sorry, lower low, right? Uh, theoretical lower low, uh, sorry, lower high. <clears throat> what tends to happen is that you get a little bit of a messy price action. As an example, I think this lower low here happens after taking another lower low in the daily chart, right? So basically a run on sell-side liquidity. And as you can see, it kind of ranges and then aggressively lower, aggressively higher, buy side continues lower, right? So after a run on buys or sell-side liquidity, we can expect price to either retrace, consolidate as it kind of happened through a couple of weeks on euro dollar. We never really know what could specifically happen, but what's the thing? We've caused an impulse quite aggressively, right? We can pull our Fibonacci from this low to this high and see that the 50% is around this area. So we have a fair value gap in here that is already mitigated in my opinion. Then another one here and this one. Now this one is pretty low, not in a good premium and discount, right? So ideally we're not using that one. So what do we do here? Well, in this these days specifically, or this one's as an example, 
the first day after we've taken sell side liquidity, I could easily expect price to start retracing, right? Retrace up to uh, some buy side liquidity, it can range, there are multiple things that could happen. But these are the days where I simply just don't really pay that much attention to a daily chart and just completely use what happens through the day. Where are the runs on buy side and sell side liquidity, right? That is simply what I do when a couple of weeks like this could occur, right? So what what can we expect here? Honestly, not much, right? If we've had this impulse, we could expect price to retrace, maybe mitigate it for value gap or the block. We haven't talked about order blocks and I actually want to talk about order blocks, but here's the thing. For Bali gap, right? Retraces up to 50, something like that we can expect. Now, what ha what did actually happen? As you can see, price, this is where we were, I think. Yeah. Uh, if we would have pulled the Fibonacci, this is the 50%. We have a fair value gap in here above the 50% that has been mitigated. And as you can see, price started going aggressively higher. Could we expect the price to go higher from here? Yeah. Could we expect the price to go higher from this point? Yes. Why? Because we've just taken sell side liquidity. We also, as you can see, we start ranging in here and we create a lot of levels or mitigations uh, around the exact same levels. Right? And why does that happen? It's just creating sell side liquidity for price to take. And when we are at this point, can we expect price to actually go higher to retrace? Definitely. Of course, what could happen? Price could continue to go lower. It could continue to uh, respect that bearish trend and simply continue impulsing, as we'll see in a couple of uh, in a couple of examples. But here's the thing: sell side liquidity taken, sell side liquidity taken from here, aggressive move higher just in this candle already. That's displacement already. Aggressive move lower, somewhat of a reversal down here, and then as you can see, the candle closes there and then continues higher. What could have been for? Well, the 50% is mitigated. I don't think it's actually mitigated on that candle. We have buy sell liquidity, either this one or this one, right? We have multiple levels that we can be aiming at if we are trying to buy from one of this. So, again, if we are on this candle, can we expect price to go lower? We could. If we are here, can we expect price to go higher? Definitely, because we've just taken this sell side liquidity. See how we are using the fact that we've taken sell side, buy side, we've mitigated this, we've mitigated that to use it to try to understand why price could go lower, higher, or just stay where it is. That's how we develop our idea of what could happen on the daily chart. Now, what happens after that candle that we just saw? It there's a tiny bit of a gap, as you can see, oh, it jumps from this, which is Friday's close, Monday's open up here, quite aggressive uh, gap. But what, what does it really do? It takes buy sell liquidity, tricks retail traders into believing market might be bullish when it when it actually isn't bullish. What do we see? Price aggressively lower through a Tuesday. Right? Aggressively lower through a Tuesday. And what do we have now? We had an impulse on the daily chart. We have a retracement that has mitigated the 50%, has mitigated a daily fair value gap, has taken buy sell liquidity. We see aggressive price action which creates or causes a displacement and generates a fair value gap are we going to ex expect bullish prices from here because i don't see not a single one reason for us to expect bullish prices is there a fair value gap in this move higher because sure people could say okay so we have run and sell side market shift retracement continuation higher can we actually expect that i guess we can but do we have a fair value gap here we don't what do we have on the other side we actually don't get a market shift although we could call this a market shift but aggression higher buy sell liquidity taken aggression lower we could say again that this is a market shift i'm not going to say that i don't care about uh, a market shift on this time frame if i have a daily uh fair value gap i'm gonna i'm gonna use it as something even though it causes or doesn't cause a market shift better of course if it does retrace us back into a fair value gap can i what what am i going to expect here if anything else than a bearish continuation. Nothing, right? Nothing. So, this is actually really cool. I, I never used the, the drones in this app. And this is exactly what happens, right? This is exactly what happens. Now, uh, what are we going to expect now? We are at a pretty low move. Can we expect more sales? Definitely try to sell more if you want. If you get the confluences, the trend is definitely bearish. Why would you avoid that direction? Now, of course, can we expect also a retracement up to at least 50% of this? Definitely. We could expect some kind of a retracement because what do we have? Impulse, retracement, and we have the impulse. Can we expect the retracement? We definitely can. Now, what do we get on the next one? 
Well, it's a little bit of a further analysis. As you can see, there's the 50%. And above the 50%, the only fair value gap that we have on the daily chart is this one. Right? So what am I expecting? Price to trade up to the 50%. Doesn't necessarily need to get to the fair value gap. If it gets there, then even great, then even better, right? And as you can see on the next one, it does, and this is where your dollar currently is at. Actually, this is a bit lower, but well, the 50% is mitigated either way. This is where we are. This is the reason why, as an example, I said this week that I wanted to see, I already said that I wanted to see lower prices because this, can we expect bullish prices from this? What is this? This is just a retracement. This is an impulse higher, sure. Do we have our value gaps on that impulse higher? We don't. Can we expect something like this to occur? Now, it could definitely happen because price has been quite bullish for, uh, bearish, sorry, for quite some time. As you can see, this is months ago and this basically is just well, right now, right? Just continues to be bearish. Um, can we expect something like this to occur and will turn bullish? Definitely could turn bullish to seek some larger amount of buy sell liquidity before continuing lower, definitely. But at the time, we're not going to expect that. Because that doesn't happen often. A change in trend to take multiple buys at liquidity to then continue lower, right? So that's the reason why this week I wanted to see bullish prices. And this is this is the open, right? This is the open. Aggressively higher. And now going aggressively lower. In my opinion, theoretically or... Well, not theoretically. Ideally, we finish below that. Making that weekly candle bearish. And that's it. So why was I expecting bearish prices this week? Because we are, we have caused a pretty aggressive retracement. We got close to 50%. We are inside a, inside a daily fair value gap, right? Now, ideally, due to the power of three concept, which I haven't talked about yet, probably you, you'll see it already. Um, we start the week here, start aggressively higher. Manipulating people into believing the week is going to be bullish, just following last week's, last week's um, direction, right? And now, continuation lower. Ideally, going below this uh, below weeks open, right? So it turns into a bearish candle. Otherwise, it wouldn't be bearish. And that's it. That's how you can go to your daily charts and say, okay, so we've just taken buy side liquidity. Can we continue any, Can we continue going lower? I've just taken sell side. Can we expect price to go higher? I've just uh, well, not I. Uh, price has just caused a quite an aggressive impulse. Can we continue to trade that impulse? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, because as an example, on this, can we say that you've had already a pretty aggressive impulse? Definitely. Now, there's still sell side liquidity pending here, still sell side liquidity pending here. Can we expect price to actually reach down onto those levels? Definitely, right? And also, if this is a retracement, we also have a target on this. If price retraces later, this is also another target, right? That's how I understand that the daily chart can go through this to this side to the other side and so on and so forth right that's how i determine the daily bias right and how again you can as well with practice right so after daily bias we'll jump onto i don't know because i'm still writing this but we'll, we'll see we're going to jump straight into the point because after we know what our daily bias theoretically is all that we really do is get up to analyze pre-market right pre-market analysis before new york kill zone begins new york kill zone goes from 7 a.m new york all the way up to 10 a.m new york but i do tend to trade up to 11 a.m new york depending on the case depending if i really want to trade if i it depends on a lot of things but usually trades still show up up to 11 a.m new york uh, but ICT does recommend to trade from 7 to 10, so if you do want to follow that, it's probably better. This is what we look for on a daily basis, always on the New York Kill Zone. This is how we trade through the New York Kill Zone and only through the New York Kill Zone. I do not know if in London Kill Zone we actually get the exact same type of concepts. I do think that it should because it's not like this is not applicable to every other pair in every other time basically but this is the way that i've learned to trade through the new york kill zone and maybe through the london kill zone this doesn't work at all right i can't say for sure you can go and check that so the run steps the five steps sorry are first 
a run stops in favor of the uh, daily chart expectation, right? So we first analyze the daily chart. We understand that we're either bearish, bullish, whatever. And then we go into lower time frames and wait for first a run on stops. Second has to happen a five or 15 minute creation of a fair value gap and a market shift. So the, so we have, we need in, in the example that we'll see, the liquidity is going to be bullish right so something like this the run on buy side liquidity and soon after price to create fair value gap right in the five or 15 minute and then the market shift or as an example the fair value gap could be something like this so it's created after the market shift but we'll discuss where is the fair value gap theoretically going to show up right Three, we'll be expecting or waiting simply for price to trade back into the fair value gap and then expect the or wait for the lower time frame to create fair value gap and a market shift. Just exactly what we wait for in the 5 and 15 minute, we just wait for in the lower time frames, which I use only the one minute. But what you can use as well is the two and three minute if the one minute starts to pull away. Right, so if the one minute if we're expecting the market shift and verbal gap to be created, it it's it is created in the one minute, but the verbal gap is not mitigated. The execution in the lower time for verbal gap doesn't happen. You can change to the two, the through the three, and the four minute to see if a higher time frame, such as again two, three, and four minute, gives us a fair value gap as well, and that will be ideally our entry as price doesn't necessarily mean doesn't necessarily need it to trade back on up to the one minute uh, fair value gap. And again, as most of you probably already know them as I mentioned them on all of my videos, but those that don't, these they are, right? They are the fair value gaps. So we're going to look at what the daily bias was for the trade that we're going to see, which is actually yesterday's trade, uh, October 5th, Wednesday. I will show other couple of examples later. Daily chart aggressive move lower price starts to retrace do we have reasons to believe price could be bullish well price has been bullish for uh last week and a couple of days this week right so monday and tuesday was bullish so we could expect price to be bullish now uh when we have a bias that it is not as clear as it could be in other cases as an example in this for inside of this fair value gap after taking this buy sell liquidity and retracing that 50 percent that we discussed earlier or after this candle or after this one uh, we can have examples like this where price is quite bullish or has been quite bullish for the past couple of days so we could expect price to be bullish what do we do in those days we simply wait for a run on buy side liquid for a run on sell side liquidity in this case and for the five simply for the five steps to show up in that direction as an example there are times that i have the five steps bullishly but i'm trusting the bearish trend so i'm just going to follow that and avoid the buys which can make me miss out on opportunities or can make me miss out on wins right uh sorry losses or profits simply right so in this example, I'm expecting a bearish price after we've mitigated this. And this is Monday, Tuesday, now Wednesday. Of course, of course, do keep in mind that this candle is after the market, but it is what it is. Now, um, what you do have to keep in mind is ICT teaches a concept of the high or low of the week to be created through uh, between Tuesday, well, actually between Sunday and Wednesday, right? Wednesday is the last day. And if it hasn't been created by... But, by then it is already created right whether it is a high or low depending on what um, direction the week will be so tuesday wednesday a high is created and if i'm expecting price to begin the week by power of three concept bullish to then go bearish this is a pretty good day to do that we are also inside a nice fair value gap and we have a, we are on premium prices we have multiple reasons to believe price could be bearish from here now what do we have keep in mind that uh, Tuesday's impulse, which is this candle right here. This is the 50% of that. That's what I used to uh, target this day specifically. And this is the price action that we had partially. As you can see, this is 12, so it's around there. This is basically previous day's New York kill zone or poor post New York kill zone. So you can see there's a high. Price takes that high, starts to basically retrace, consolidate, little bit of high, move higher, takes buys of liquidity, aggression lower little bit of consolidation 
a market opens, right? Power of three opens here, starts going aggressively higher, takes buys of liquidity, and then what happens right after it takes buys of liquidity? Aggressive move lower, 50 minute in this case, right? 50 minute, the rally gap, market shift below that low, and trade begins lower. We begin, or I personally start analyzing around 7 a.m. New York, right? So here, where are we? We are pretty low after a major impulse through London kill zone. As you can see, we've had a run of buy sell liquidity, another run of buy sell liquidity, another run of buy sell liquidity, and a pretty clear bearish direction for this day. Without even knowing what the daily what the daily chart looks like, without having the doubt of this could be bullish, do we have reasons to be looking for bearish prices? We definitely do. Price is just going bearish, and this is where we basically start analyzing. We have price basically retracing, and then we see even another move lower, which creates even a 50 minute for belly gap. Now, after we've done that analysis, we expect price to be bearish, potentially bearish, if we are expecting a weekly, a bearish week, basically, and a um, potential daily or days. Uh, the daily buys values to be bearish we have had a lot of runs on buys and liquidity so that's something that we can definitely expect now through the session i tend to trade only after not i tend to i trade only after the a30 open right and also because i can use the power of three concept and this example is beautiful this is something that happened yesterday and i really love the example because it was as simple as it can be the lower time from execution was a little bit more complicated because ideally we see a little bit of a better market shift, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, but we got everything that we look for. We got step by step what we look for. So this is uh, the open to the kill zone, right? 7 a.m. Trades a bit higher, so we could say that that's market protraction. Takes by of liquidity, starts going lower, creates a low, well, creates a higher high. A lower low, a low, a high, a lower low, right? So this is a market shift below that low. Creates a fair value gap as well from this low to this high. Price trace into it, creates a high, starts going lower, takes the high. We have the market open here, session opens right on this candle, starts trading aggressively higher, takes by its liquidity, aggressively lower, creation of a fair value gap, market shift, displacement. That's literally all that we look for from the higher time frames, of course. Now, right, coming back to the five steps. Again, what do we have? We have the run and stops. All right, let me actually, this is exactly what we look for. Theoretically, we already have uh, the daily bias sorted out, right? We understand that price is likely going to be bearish, right? So we wait for run and buy sell liquidity. We get the run and buy sell liquidity. We wait for five minute or 50 minutes to create a market shift and create a fair value gap. After the run and buy sell liquidity, it starts going aggressively lower. The fair value gap is created right here. Ideally, it trades inside this. So the move that breaks, that causes the market shift, we'll talk about that now. And after that, what is that we wait for? Price to trade back into the higher time for fair value gap. Does it do that? It definitely does. Now, what do we do? We go to the lower time frame to create a fair value gap and a market shift. What do we get? This is a fair value gap. This is not something that I traded. And through the live market in FXCM, which is what I use as my uh, price or price action provider, I don't know how to call it. Uh, this is this is mitigated after the market. It tends to change the weeks. I'm not gonna explain this. Thing is that, as you can see, there's no market shift for us to do because there's no structure to the left to actually say we had a high, a low, a higher high, and a higher low. Well, actually we kind of do, okay. Here's the thing, starts going lower. I don't see any clear structure unless we wait for this to be mitigated. This low is the only one that I could call a mark shift. So it's a high, a low, high, a lower low. That's my mark shift. That's my mark shift. That's my fair value gap because as you can see, it is created from this low to this high. And that's my execution. What? Well, well uh, I didn't take a screenshot of the target. Well, target was 50% impulse just two stays impulse right a 5.07 r by putting my stop was about that high right so what did we do in just this scenario of course i'll show more examples don't worry we understood that the daily bias could be bearish i had an ex expectation for the weak bias to be bearish and through the day 
I waited for the confluences that told me that price was likely going to be bearish as well. I waited for the run on buy side liquidity. I waited for the 5 minute market shift, the fair value gap to be created for price to trade back into the fair value gap and the lower time frames to give me the final confirmation, which is also a fair value gap and a market shift. All has to happen together. Otherwise, we cannot trade. This uh, again, this happened yesterday. Uh, usually you see two, in some cases three, in some cases just one, in some cases you don't see anyone, uh, no, not anyone, anything, right? I haven't actually had a week where you don't see even one trade. I have every single week since I've been trading like this, I've seen at least one setup. Very rarely you see one, usually you see two, you see three, right? Um... And this is exactly how I trade. This is exactly how I put every single concept that we discussed on use on one trade all together. And I believe it's a pretty simple couple of steps to follow. It's not that difficult. It's understanding what liquidity is. I don't believe it really matters to understand how it works or why it works the way that it does. You just have liquidity. So if price goes above that, price could continue to go lower after that if the trend again is bearish. And with this couple of steps, you could ask me, ask me uh, let's actually talk about that later. I was going to say you could ask me, how did I come up, come up with those steps? I'll say that at the end. So now, now let's see the next example, right? Let's leave it like this. And next example. Actually, what I've decided to do is do something a little bit more well, using a video that I already made. Um, not using the video per se, but the examples shown in that video thing that you can see well on my channel i mean if you go to to, to the way days analysis days resume weeks resumes weeks analysis and everything you'll see multiple examples on how i apply these five steps one by one we will see something more in depth don't worry but we'll go through these videos not videos uh examples one by one so assuming we are expecting a bullish trend here on this new kill zone we get a run sell side liquidity Right with the open, as you can see, the open is from this high down to this low, right? Just in case you can't see that. Session opens here, right? It probably news, definitely news, sorry. Starts going lower. There's no fair value gap in any way. There is a fair value gap here. Now, did this fair value gap was, sorry, was this fair value gap created uh, after a run of buys liquidity? It was not. So, can we look for sells inside of this fair value gap? We cannot. Also, there's a run of buys liquidity, sorry, sells at liquidity as soon as that fair value gap is created. So we also have a run on, buy on sell side liquidity once again. Price starts going somewhat aggressively higher. We have a market shift, a fair value gap, and price comes back into it. Now going back to five steps, we get step uh, one, step two, fair value gap, and the market shift. Step three. Now let's see step four and five. Step four will be, we have two in this case, first mitigation right here. This is the first mitigation, aggressive move higher. We have a market shift. We have a fair value gap. Uh, also this market shift, if we wanted to use it, thing is that this is definitely a valid entry that we could use and would have ended up in a loss. Thing that shows that this strategy, of course, is not 100%. Now, what do we have later? Price creates a lot of mitigations around the same level, um, along with this 10 bit of a week here and trades aggressively below those, takes a lot of buy sell liquidity, trades aggressively higher, creating displacement, clear displacement, market shift, and a fair value gap. This is another opportunity that we could have taken, right? Why could have we taken this? Because we have step number three, step number four, right, with the market shift and the fair value gap, step number five will be mitigation right here, stop list below. Cool, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this is just a loss. We're going to apply the losses because theoretically we're just showing how to apply it and how it works out, not how it fails. It fails just like just like the one that we just saw. It just doesn't work out and it is what it is. We're not going to have 100% profitability in here. So we are on a day where we're expecting bearish price action for some reason or another. We also have the fact that through phase one, we have, well, not phase one, through as soon as 7 a.m. begins, as soon as the kills and starts, it trades aggressively higher, it takes by some liquidity, a little bit of a range, aggression lower, fair value gap in here. That's not something that we can actually use. Session opens on this candle right here, trades aggressively lower, 
trades ag aggressively higher, there's a run on buys and liquidity, mitigates an order block. We're not going to talk about order blocks, so it doesn't really matter. Thing is that it takes buys and liquidity, goes aggressively lower. There's a market shift. Fair value gap is created in here. This one is pretty low, and we do get stop loss on this. But thing is that if we use the Fibonacci, we could have seen that this is the only fair value gap that we can trade, and this retracement here doesn't actually get to the 50%. So that's a way that we can avoid losses like this one. All right. So step one will be run on stops. Step two will be market shift and fair value gap. Step three, price trace back into it. And now let's jump on to four and five. Price trace into it, start, start trading aggressively lower. What do we have? Step four with market shift and fair value gap. Step five with the lowest time frame execution. Stop loss above the high and price starts going aggressively lower. The result is right there going for this lower low and that is 3R that we would have taken on this trade specifically. Let's jump on to Monday. Monday we have a little bit of a more complicated scenario but thing is that if we're expecting bearish price action or if we are just applying the five steps we see a move higher there is a run and sell side liquidity here um the example is this one let's just go through the example price is up here starts training lower run on buy, on buy sell liquidity right with this move so step one step two is market shift and fair value gap step three trace back into it right on this candle and let's see step four and five Step four is, uh, well, this is the first mitigation. As you can see, it retraces. It doesn't create a market shift. It doesn't cause a uh, fair value gap. So there's literally nothing for us to, to do on this one, right? On this first move, it trades aggressively higher, mitigates things back here. Also a fair value gap. Market shift, right? You see a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low. Right, a lower low by breaking this low and if we're going to get in here that sadly as i mentioned earlier uh you tend to see with fxcm right with fxcm you tend to see the the weeks changed after the market which means that this is not a fair value gap on this uh after the um after the market but during the market there was a fair value gap here and you can go to this specific day which i do not know which one it is um and see how the weeks do show a a fair value gap, right? So step four, right? Yeah, step four, market shift below this low, right? By breaking this low, and the fair value gap happens around the same level. Stop loss either above this high or above this one. These are four or well, actually three or four examples on which uh you can clearly see how the five steps can be taken, both buying and selling. Now let me show you a couple more. Let's look at let's look at the blueprints of what we're looking for. On one side, the higher time frame, the five minute or the fifteen minute. Let's actually put it there so there's no confusion. Usually, I use the five minute mostly, but sometimes the five minute is not clear and the fifteen minute actually is creating fair value gaps in the fifteen minute, but not in the five. Believe it or not, that actually happens, and there was a time that I actually missed out on an opportunity, and that happened. But well, you know, that's why. We learn from those things and on a bearish scenario this is this is exactly what we look for a run by sell liquidity the five minutes to cause a market shift and this is what you need to keep in mind the fair value gap has to be created in the move that causes the market shift whether it is in the 15 whether it is in the five minute or in the one minute time frame okay so in this move here you can see that there's a a higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low. This move here, from this high, from the high that the high that actually causes the the move that ends up creating the lower low, is the move where we're going to be looking for the fair value gaps. But they have to be created between the low that is the actual market shift and the high that causes that market shift. So it'd be from this high all the way down to this low. This is exactly where we're looking for a fair value gap. So. For me, for me, if there's a fair value gap in here, this is not something that I can use. Okay, so we're going to be looking for fair value gaps to show up from the high that causes the market shift to the to the market shift itself, to the low that is actually what we're using as our market shift. Okay, and that is the exact same thing that we're going to do in the one minute. If the one minute has this structure and this is the market shift the market shift that we're looking for this is the area where the fair value gap has to show up if it sh if a fair value gap show us shows up in here that is not a fair value gap that i can use because usually this is going to be used either as liquidity or be completely ignored 
right? Usually. Keep in mind that I'm saying usually because sometimes it can react to this and it just continues to fall, right? But based on my experience, I prefer seeing price trading back up to this area, right? And oh, of course, ICT himself says that this is where the Fibonacci gap has to show up. If it doesn't show up in there, then th there's no trip for us to take, right? Um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way because uh, I've been saying that there's an area specifically to look for those for valley gaps to show up, and that is the one that I mean. And as you can see, there are two drawings which are similar, but the difference is the market shift. You can see how we have higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low. See how this low is broken. Then we have this higher high, higher low, higher high, then a low, a lower high, and a lower low. Do we end up having a lower low? Yes, but at the same time, this low hasn't been broken, so theoretically, the trend hasn't changed. If you asked me, this usually will be what I would call substructure, so structure that is within the major or the the actual structure. Uh, but this is what I've been using, and it works out. You were able to see on some of the weak trades, we go back to this. There's one specifically, if I remember correctly. So as you can see. Higher high, right? Changes the mar the market structure shifts when breaking this high. So lower low, lower high, lower low. Higher high when breaking this high. Higher low, higher high. Low, lower high because it's lower to this previous high, right? This is basic market structure. Lower low because it's lower than this low. Is it substructure? Ideally, this will be the market shift. It is substructure, but it creates a market shift. It creates a fair value gap that we're looking for, and this is my execution this trade right so that's exactly what we're looking for right even though uh again ideally we see this low being broken or this low and exactly the same thing we have on the one minute this is higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high a low a well actually higher low at this point a lower high a low low right so market shifts for volley gap entry this is exactly what we look for on the bearish side now let's look at the bullish side we'll just invert the scale and this is exactly what we're looking at. So in the 5 and 50 minute, what are we looking for? Price to take sell side liquidity in this case. Right? Sell side liquidity. Aggressive move higher. Causing a market shift. And in this area is where the fair value gap has to show up. In the 5 minute. Fair value gap shows up. We go to the... We wait for the lower time frames to give us step 3, 4, and 5. Price mitigates that. So you can see no market shift. Market shift, fair value gap, execution, same with this one, and well, the same scenario on the other 5 minute fair value gap. This is the blueprint. This is exactly what, what I look for. And let me make a little bit of a better drawing now so you have something to screenshot and save. So, this is the bearish blueprint on the higher time frame, right? This is a 5 minute or a 15 minute. We need a run by set liquidity, the 5 minute market shift, and so this is the, the blueprint of what you're looking for in a 5 or 15 minute time frame on the bearish side, right? The bearish example. You're looking for a, buy and, for a run and buy side liquidity for a 5 or 15 minute time frame market shift, right? 5 minute or 15 minute again to create a fair value gap. And then when price trades back into the fair value gap, we look for the lower time frame opportunities. Right. Also, keep in mind that this, from this high to this low, for, to this low, this is where we look for the fair value gaps. Right. And on the bullish example, it's exactly the same thing. We need a run and sell side liquidity, aggression lower, well higher, market shift, retracement, fair value gap in the five again, five or fifteen minute, and lower time for opportunities. And from this low to this high, right, is where the fair value gaps have to show up. Now let's see a tiny thing about where the lower how the lower time frames have to look. Okay. We'll talk about the lower time frames and I thought that maybe it would be better for me to just do something like this, just a drawing with a pencil which will be just much easier and take less time, right? We have a rectangle here. This rectangle represents either a 5 or a 50 minute fair value gap. Right? Remember this fair value gap, as I mentioned previously on the previous part of this video, it's, uh, it has to happen on the area mentioned, and it has to happen after a nice run on buy side liquidity. I don't know why I can't move this, but I can't. And 
So this is a 5 or 50 minute farewell gap, right? And we are looking, this will be after step 1 and 2. Now we're looking for step 3. We need to wait for press to mitigate this area. And I do have, have this tiny bit of a theory, which is not really a theory. It's just something based on uh, experience, right? The things that I've experienced personally. That sometimes you see price mitigating the area barely, causing something like this. Market shift and all counts back, or belly gap, entry works out, not, sorry, doesn't work out, entry is mitigated, and then this is taken as buy side. Mark shift, or belly gap, stop loss, entry, works out, right? Uh, now, I'm not saying that you have to wait for this to happen. What I am saying, though, is that I've seen many of these trades where price gets in the area barely, reacts quite aggressively, and then it fails being taken as buy set, right? To then actually give us the entry that we're looking for. So here's the thing. I've taken, well, we'll talk about the, the, the trades that I've taken later. Uh, later. But the thing is that sometimes you are going to have to make a decision on whether you want to take this type of trades or not. Here's the thing. If I have everything in my favor, a favor, if my daily bias is bearish, if my um, if the run on buys liquidity was lovely, right, was clear, then we see the immediate five minute mark shift with the fair belly gap at the right place and price trading back out into that. I don't care how the lower time frame looks. I just care that I get step four and five, right? Well, four mostly. Price trades back into it, causes a reaction aggressively, creating the market shift, creating the fair belly gap. That's my execution. I don't care if I was to take a loss on this one. If I take a loss and I believe that that was because this barely mitigated the, the POI and um, it could it basically was taken as liquidity, right? And then this one shows up, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop taking this one. Because there has been times where this happens and this works out. I'm not, and I'm really not willing to miss out on an opportunity when I have everything that I'm looking for. So this is when things about trusting the strategy, trusting the risk to reward ratio, right? The, right, the risk management that we use um, comes into a pretty big play in situations like this, right? Because we are understanding that this is maybe this is a loss because we've seen multiple trades like this showing up, but we go for it anyways, because we say, it's everything that we look for. It's in a strategy. So we're going to take it. If we continue to see multiple losses like this one, then maybe we can do a little bit of a further analysis or a deeper investigation onto what actually happens when we're doing something like this to say, okay, so this is happening too often. Let's see what we can do about it, right? And maybe then we could say, yes, let's wait for this run of buy side and then this entry, avoiding a loss, right? And taking just a win. At the same time, of course, there are going to be opportunities where if we were to do that, this would fail. We're waiting for price to go higher. It just reacts to this and continues going lower, right? We could say, okay, so let's take the next market shift for value gap entry, and that's it. Um, for me, reason why I'm saying all of this, for me, I'm good enough with whatever shows up as long as we have what we're looking for, right? I need price to first trade back into the area, which is actually step three right second or uh fourth right to cause a market shift and between this low which is the low that it causes a market shift and this high is where the fair body gap has to show up that's my entry this is my stop loss right there it is <laughs> that's my stop loss uh that's really pretty much it that's exactly what I look for in the lower time frames. It's not really complicated to understand what I'm looking for in the lower time frames. If it happens like that, if it happens, however it happens, I'm I'm fine with it, right? Because it is what it is. It's what the market is giving us. And again, if it's within my plan, if the if the reaction is what I'm looking for in my plan, that's good enough for me. Now let's look at the bullish example, which is literally the exact same thing. Right, trace back into the fair value gap. Causes a market shift, doesn't matter how big, doesn't matter how important. Thing is that it is a market shift, creating that tiny bit of a fair value gap entry, stop loss here. Uh, first target, as an example, I drew by mistake a couple of equal highs. That definitely could be a nice target. That's my uh, first take profit. And then maybe looking for the higher high that was created on the, on the 50 minute structure. Definitely will do that whenever I have an iPad. Um... 
this is exactly what I'm looking for, right? There are going to be multiple differences on the lower time frames, right? As there will be in the higher time frames. The thing is to remember the concepts, right? Thing is about remember the concepts because we need to understand what we're looking for specifically, and things will be ideal. If we have something like this, where's our market shift right now? Here, all the way up there. So that means that price has to move all the way up there, creating fair value gaps, and then an entry, which may be the fair value gap, the first or the most close, the closest fair value gap is up here. So our entry is here, adding the spreads, stop loss all the way down there. That's a huge stop loss, at least from this perspective, right? So ideally, if we have something like this, what will happen is that while price is actually going higher, it will do stuff like this. That's a market share for me. Because we were doing lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. I, a theoretical lower low, a theoretical, well, high, uh, lower, no, higher low, right? Because it's higher than this one and this one right here. So a theoretical lower low, but creates a higher low and then the higher high. Higher low, higher high, higher low. This is what we're expecting. The market shift has changed now. And having that market shift, Theoretically, our stop loss, sorry, our fair value gap should be around here. Ideally, we use the stop loss all the way down here. Theoretically, if the fair value gap is to work out, stop loss should be fine there. But of course, um, we always want to be safe with this, right? We want to take the safest stop loss. Unless, as an example, if we we're getting a really bad risk reward ratio, we could say, okay, let's risk it on this one, right? Stop loss here. We get a nice risk reward ratio. Maybe target something around here, 4 hour, 5 hour, whatever it is, right? Target wise, um, haven't really talked about that, but basically we're looking for buy side liquidity or sell side liquidity, depending on what we're doing. If we're selling, we're going to be looking for sell side. If we're buying, we're looking for buy side liquidity. We're looking for previous days low, previous days high. We're looking for liquidity overall. If you see a couple of equal lows close to us and it's 4R, I'd recommend closing the trade right there. Right? That's how I base my trades. I, I think I did explain it. Um, oh, I actually talked about it on the week resume. Never mind. That's exactly what I do, right? That's exactly what I do. If I see equal highs, as an example, um, where do I have the, the five minute thing? This is what we're looking for, right? And as an example, here you can see how there's a low, lower, but sorry, uh, high, 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 low, high, high, lower, low, theoretical lower high, because it has retraced, right? And we're expecting the price to actually create a lower high here to continue going lower, creating the next lower low. So we can say, okay, in here, what do we get? Price trace into it, market shift, one minute for belly gap. That's our entry. That's our stop loss. And what are we targeting? We can target this, right? So that's what we target, being that maybe six R or five R or four R, right? As an example, this will be this is the easiest target. Reason why it's the easiest target is because theoretical, theoretically, it's um, if we are right about our, about our analysis, the lower low on the bullet on the five minute or the 50 minute, depending where, where, where we are, should be created, right? So that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for, for, we're looking for the trend to continue. But as an example, maybe we want to be a little, more, a little bit more risky. And back here, there was a little bit of a range that, that, that basically caused a higher high, right? And we could say, okay, let's look at this sell side liquidity. So we have a little bit of a larger target, which could be an extra 2R, 3R, or just an extra 1R, right? As an example, if I was getting 4R here, and to get all the way down here, I'm getting just an extra R, 5R, I'm not interested in that. Because I'm risking the fact that I'm, we're already creating the lower low. Price could retrace quite aggressively, looking for something around our break even, as an example, right? And then continue going lower, taking me out on break even and actually hitting the target and maybe going even further, right? That is a little bit of a problem when going with aggressive targets. Um, also, you have to keep in mind that as an example, we're, we can go for previous day slow, right? So previous day slow could be something like, like down here. I actually move the policy example. Let's move it here. So we don't worry about it. So let me draw a little bit more. No, I'm going to take forever with this. Okay. Uh, let's assume that previous day slow is here, right? That's previous day slow. This is a really large target. Maybe we're getting 10, 15 R. I personally don't really like going for that large trades, those kind of large trades. If I have a personal target of a 5% on a week, 
I'm going for that 5%. If I want to risk it and go for a 6% because maybe I took a loss, so I want to cover the loss and finish the week on a 5%, I can do that. But ideally, I'm closing below this low. Right? Even though I, can, I know I can target this. I know that if the trend is correct, um, price should get there. Whether, of course, maybe the trade doesn't, isn't respected when getting down there. What I mean with that is, as an example, maybe we do get the opportunity, starts trading lower, it gets to this, and then it goes higher, it takes it high, and then it gets to that. It could definitely happen, right? And we basically took a let's sell like this. We were 8 hour here, looking for maybe 12, and it turned against us right there, right? It's just really not ideal, really not ideal. I'm rumbling a lot here, and I shouldn't be, because I scripted everything, and I shouldn't be talking about this. That's what I'm looking for in the lower time frames. That's exactly what I'm looking for in the lower time frames. For price to mitigate the area, to create a market shift. In the market shift, we should see her valley gaps. Her valley gaps. Stop loss all the way down there. And that's it. That's our entry. And on this other side, market shift. Her valley gap. Looking for that continuation. Target. Bearish side, this. If this is not giving us a good risk or reward ratio, then we go for maybe there's another low or maybe in the higher time frames, as an example, the 50 minute has a little bit of a range here and a, basically a higher high, high low, 50 minute higher high, high low, 50 minute higher uh, low in this case, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So we can target this, thinking that the 50 minute trend can change, but maybe this is just a retracement, mitigates the order of the block, mitigates the fair value gap and gets just going higher. This is the thing about targets. You're never going to know where price is going to go. But what you can be sure of is that if you are correct about the trend, the lower lows should be taken. Right? Maybe there is, again, buy side liquidity, sell side liquidity. Those are the things you are targeting. Right? Uh, that's why we talked about liquidity. Right? If price takes buy side liquidity, what, it, what it we will get to next is sell side liquidity. Right? So here, it, look at... I said that there was bias on liquidity here, which I believe there is because it barely takes that high. But look at how aggressive it goes higher first. Takes that. I think we do have a better screenshot later. No. In my opinion, it actually takes a high, the buy side liquidity, rushes down to the sell side liquidity, takes that with this week already, but then goes even further, and then all the way up to the buy side liquidity again. If we were to take a sell in here, after taking off the sell side liquidity, we can definitely know that this high is going to be taken if we are right about the analysis, if we are actually correct on the direction that we're choosing, right? As an example, price has retraced here. If we decided to take an entry in here for any kind of reasons, we are targeting this high because theoretically, the trend, theoretically, the trend should be respected and the higher high should be created. Uh, of all, also, the higher high has uh, buy sell liquidity. I'm looking for, let's actually look at the examples I drew, all right? So here, it goes higher, it takes buy sell liquidity, right? Well, here it takes a buy sell liquidity here, mitigates a fair value gap. Why are we targeting at least down to this low, right? Of course, it's the daily chart, right? If you understand the point. Here, uh, a lot of buy sell liquidity was taken, and you can see lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. If trend is actually going to be respected, and this is not just a retracement and continue going higher, this low should be taken. And also has multiple reactions, as you can see. We could definitely say that this is uh, a lot of sell sell liquidity being created, right? Uh, that price can you can see the aggression when price actually takes that. That's something that price does. Here you have run buy side liquidity, fair value gap, trace that takes buy side liquidity, goes aggressively lower. What do we have here as an example? Multiple mitigations around this, right? So it takes the buy side liquidity, still respecting this couple of levels, then target that low, right? Target that low, and if the trend's right, and if price actually wants to take just that buy side, like that sell side liquidity, it can. Right? As you can see, what does it do later? It actually respects this. Well, it's a little bit higher than I thought it was. But basically, you can see multiple reactions around this level. Price gets back to that and respects it again. That's pure manipulation. Goes higher, mitigates something, maybe an order the block, maybe a fair value gap in the lower time frame. It does go pretty high up. You see a bit of aggression, market shifting there, fair value gap, lower time frame entries. You can target this, you can target that low, so on and so forth. Right? Targets is... People tend to see it as something difficult, uh, but it doesn't really tend to be that, that much. And they can't erase those. It doesn't tend to be that that much difficult, if I can be honest. Uh, I never really have much of an issue with targeting, right? Uh, because ideally, if the trend is respected, then it's pretty much all you're actually doing, right? Same with this. This Are these the examples? No, this is the bias. 
right? What are we targeting in this one? 50% of previously simples. That's right, right? So if we are, if we have a bullish impulse as an example, and that was a pretty large impulse, and we're expecting some kind of a retracement, we can definitely expect at least the 50% to be mitigated. Of course, that doesn't mean that it will actually get to the 50%. We could say it could retrace up to the 62%. And that doesn't mean that it could get there, right? In this case, the trend actually completely changes. And I did say that maybe this is the week's high, right? I said that this is maybe the week's high, which ended up being, and it actually went quite lower. So we could have taken this sell. Actually, it's not. It's actually not respected uh, later on. So no, we could have not taken this to target uh, the week's uh, the week's open or the, the ending of Friday, basically. That's pretty much it. Same with this. I mean, low time for entry, we could have gone for just this. But of course, risk reward ratio does kind of ruin this one as an example because we don't really have that much margin selling from around here with the stop loss around up there. Uh, we just don't really get much risk reward ratio on that one. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it about the executions. And um, now we need to talk about tradings, right? Trades. This is basically it. This is exactly what I do. I look at the daily bias what do i think about the daily bias what do i think could happen today or through the entire week and then i just look for the five steps in that direction if it gives me the five steps on the opposite direction i'm expecting i could try to take advantage of it but it can it tends to be that the, the trades that i've taken against the daily bias have been entirely due to swings literally that's all that they've been right so, um, yeah, it is what it is, you know. Uh, ideally, we, we avoid those kind of trend trades. Or we're targeting something really safe. Really safe. Cool. Now, I wanted to do examples. But I decided to show you this. My channel. Actually, can I go to my channel? Let's, let's go to my channel. I probably could do a couple of playlists or this in Spanish, but can't change it right now. This is all my videos, right? Uh, I don't know when I started doing ICTs. So from this point, three months ago, I began uploading ICTs concepts, right? Back tested us the dollar for a week. So basically from this point on, right? You already have a live training video here three months ago. All of these videos are about ICT either explaining stuff either going through the week or just as an example a live session this one took a 3.5 r right this is oh this is thursday's trade oh tuesday's oh last week yeah not this one last week i uploaded today i uploaded the uh three the three percent week i'm actually we can zoom in a bit more yeah the three percent week this is a live analysis this is an execution i mean you could search it here you put live you can see there are live analysis, live analysis, and execution. Um, this was a lovely day. And this is where you can truly see that I do exactly what I've explained in this video. right? And I'm not doing really this to, to get views on those videos. I really don't care. I, can, I think I can show you. I don't know if it's against the... I don't know if I can actually show the... Hello guys, I'm recording this while editing uh, the the video, and I've seen other. I just was doing a little bit of a research, and I did see that other people has showed their estimated re revenue, right? So I just wanted to show it here, just so it, I'm updating it. As I mentioned, 4480, I think I mentioned through the video. This is basically it. This is why I said that YouTube isn't really an, an income for me because it's not worth this amount of money. It's not really worth the amount of hours that I've put in all of the videos that I've done uh, this far. Just so you don't think that I'm actually making money out of this. Just roll the video. I, I, I kind of wanted to do it, but I don't know if I can do it. I'll just say it. Uh, my YouTube studio says that I'm going to make $40. $40 for... Well, I was monetized a couple uh, weeks ago. I think it was two weeks ago. So I was told by someone that I'm making this to make $10 per video, but I'm really not making $10 per video. Even if I was making $10 per video, that would be not worth my time, really. It just wouldn't be worth my time because this video, sure, it did take me, it took me 20 minutes to, to record it, maybe 20 minutes more to, to just edit it, to, to do the thumbnail and everything. Uh, but if I was making these videos, the the where is well this one this one alone took me 10 hours to make 
approximately the script the, the the screenshots the recording and i haven't even started to edit it yet it's going to take me more another probably two or three hours more and i'm maybe making ten dollars on this one the one that made the, the got the view the most views this one twenty thousand views i think i made 12 no actually more uh 15 maybe close to 20 dollars. this one i don't think i can show it right i don't know if it's against the youtube uh guide guidelines or something so i'm not going to show the the thing just in case but currently it says that i'm making 45 dollars 44 dollars 44 dollars and something so if you really think that i'm making this for the money i i need a couple of those and thousands more um to actually start making money from this and actually say okay this is worth my time this is not worth my time making these kind of videos as long as they are or as an example my this video took me an hour and 30 to record approximately more probably and um then to edit it because i have to check that i haven't coughed through the video have some background noise could happen there are multiple things i just have to check but it's it takes me a lot of time right and it's just really not worth my time and the reason why i do all of this all of these videos is because it helps me and in the background or in the sideline it helps everyone else that is actually watching it right watching these videos because for me doing this trying to teach trying to explain concepts trying to explain what i look for makes me think more um more thoroughly than i usually do and that makes me question what things I do, why do I do them, and how I actually do them. Which takes me to improving. I've improved a lot from the first video that I uploaded on this one, right, three months ago. I've improved a lot from that moment, right? And um, that's why I do these videos. I don't do it because of the money. Sure, it's going to give me some money now that I'm monetized. A couple of weeks ago, again, it was monetized. monetized. But it's really not that much. I, the, the $40 that I uh, theoretically made, I, I don't even know if, uh, if that's what I'll get. Because it says, it says uh, expected earnings or provisional earnings. I don't know, something like that. It's just like estimated, estimated, estimated revenue, something like that. So it says $44, so it's estimated. So I don't know if it will be less or if it will be more. Right, and I think I need to get to 100 to be able to actually get paid. So here's the thing: I'm doing this because when I make these videos, trying to explain people why I did this, why did why I did that through a session, why I took this trade, why I took this loss, this win, and so on and so forth, just helps me to improve. These uh, resumes, right, uh, and the back testing videos. I back test. I don't back test too much. I have back tested a lot. I uh, just don't like recording it. Don't like recording myself back testing i just when i'm back testing i'm kind of listening to music singing you know i i hate having to commentate to do a back testing session it tires me you have no idea how much it tires me this one took me like an hour and 30 to record and then another hour to to edit it and the back testing the other one i think i made a 50 minute video back testing an hour uh it's just so tiring really it's these videos if it was for the money that i'm making on youtube making between a lot of chords it's really not worth it and again the reason why there is because it helps me improve and while i'm talking showing what i do it helps people that watch right people that uh watches and actually pays attention i don't believe i'm a really good trader i have been profitable for a month and a half already actually two months well what month were oh we're in october well yeah two months and a half maybe two months uh, i was able to get my funded account back to break even i'm starting a i've started a challenge last week uh which i intend to pass as fast as possible but again that depends on the market honestly if it gives me the the, the, the trades that i want to see or not right so i'm not making these videos for money right and making these videos for money at the time if i was to make a course maybe it would be worth my my money as i talked through telegram uh, yesterday uh but like this it's really not worth it so if you really think i'm making a lot of money from youtube believe me i am not right now it says estimated revenue 40 something dollars and we're talking about more than 50 hours between the recordings and editing and the timings and the 
thumbnails and everything, it's just really not worth it, right? I do it because it helps me and it might help people that uh, say, okay, so this guy's theoretically making money. Let's try and see what he does. And when you see what I do, you just go to your charts and maybe you see that, oh yeah, that actually does show up. And when that shows up, you can learn from it. I'm not going to tell you to trade from it because I can't. But if you feel like you're confident enough in your uh, own abilities and you decide to, to, to go for it, well, go for it. But of course, that's completely on you. So going back to the important, I wanted to show examples of how I apply these steps. But honestly, all of these videos are that. We have this video. I really like this day. This, this day was lovely. Uh, I think I opened it twice. These videos are awesome. I say them myself, right? Of course, but here's the thing. Um, this video show exactly how I was... Because it's a live market. I see the run on buy sell liquidity. I see that there might be a fair value gap in there. And then I wait for the lower time for execution, right? It gets there. We have the market shift. We have the theoretical uh, fair value gap about to occur. I'm showing it right there. I actually bought by mistake. <laughs> such a mess, such a good video, just completely ruined. But this little stupid, uh, mistake on that <laughs> it was definitely fun of course this is not my funded this is not my challenge it's nothing it's just a demo that turned out uh at a four something percent and i'm risking double what it should be uh and this is just one of those right this is just one of those videos you have multiple of those my weekly improvement method it's showing the entire week talking about concepts talking about why we could have uh what is this Oh uh, yeah. Um why I took this sell, why I took that buy, and so on and so forth. Multiple concepts, multiple things talked about, right? This is the day where I took a win, then got back up to break even with a trade that could have given me four percent, I think it was. This week, well on the month, on as you can see on the thumbnail of this one, on ten percent for the month, right? I made three percent last week, theoretically, plus plus three percent this week. Now we'll be at ten percent, right? For the for the two weeks that I've been trading on October, of course, two weeks already. Actually, no, is it? Oh yeah, no. Uh, well, actually, well, I kind of lied on that thumbnail then. Yeah, my bad. I didn't intend to. I, I thought that this was already second week of October. It has been in the past few weeks at ten percent, ten percent the past two weeks. But yeah. So you want to see live examples or examples alone? You can see them on my analysis on today's press action, the weak resumes. I know they're long in some cases, answering questions and some tips, multiple things shown in there as well. Clean price action in a while. This was a lovely trade. I remember it. Uh, that I made a mis I made multiple mistakes on this one. I missed out on a couple of opportunities. This was such a lovely price action. I'm s I was so mad that I missed out on them, but well, that is what it is, you know. Uh, maybe missing out on these trades is what allowed me to not miss out on the trades this week and the trades past week and so on and so forth. But really, this is as much as I can offer you, right? I wanted to do examples, look for the examples, take the screenshots, explain them. But really, I've done that for the past three months. And you can see multiple videos about that. And I do encourage to encourage you to do that. Again, not going to make that much money from the videos that we're going to get through this. And I don't think many of you are actually going to look at multiple videos. But I, this is what I recommend you. Right? This is what I recommend you. Where we are going to discuss the what to do now. And this might be a boring part to watch, but not a boring part to listen to, or an important part to listen to, better said. Uh, because I don't really have much to show. Maybe I put something in the background. I don't think I will do that because I don't have videos to actually put in the background. Uh, thing is, we're going to talk about what you're supposed to do now. Or what I recommend you do now. This video alone shouldn't allow you. Well, not it's not shouldn't allow you, but you are not likely to learn everything that I currently know and do with just this video, right? I truly don't 
believe that with just this video or with just a mentorship, right? As an example, ICT's mentorship, I don't believe that just watching the mentorship will allow you to um the next day or well yeah the next day after you finish watching the the mentorship i don't think you're going to be able to get into the market and say okay so price is going to go this way then then this way if price is this i'm going to take a sell if price is this i'm going to take a buy and so on and so forth i don't think you're going to be able to do that next day nor next week i, I mean consistently of course after watching ict's mentorship right i don't think you're going to be able to to do that after watching this video either what I do think you will you will be able to do, and do keep in mind that this will depend entirely on you. Um, if you watch this video, or if you watch the ICT mentorship entirely, or if you watch both of those things, you're going to learn a lot of concepts, a lot of uh, things that happen in the market and repeat themselves over and over, that you'll be able to use in the market to try and determine where price might go and trade those trades basically through them account i do believe you you will be able to do that with the concepts you learn on this video with the concepts you learn on ict's mentorship videos but i don't believe you're going to be able to do that in just a day or in just a week or in just a two couple of weeks i've been studying ict for probably five months already or four months already and at the beginning I have had this somewhat of a beginner's luck every single time that I jump onto an ex a new strategy. That whenever I jump onto a new strategy, as soon as I begin trading with it, I get either really lucky or I just do things correctly. I don't know how it works out, but every single time I change my strategy, I've changed my strategy multiple times on my Forex, Forex career. And every time I change to a new strategy, that strategy works for me right away. With ICT, it was the same. I started making money on demo like multiple days in a row, and I said, okay, that's it. That's all that I really need. I didn't jump onto a uh, funded, nor, well, I actually did jump onto my funded, the funded that I had uh, made with uh, my previous strategy, and almost blew it, was pretty close to blowing it. And because I just, as I said, I don't know if I was lucky, if I was doing things rightly. I have no idea, honestly, how I did that thing is that after that I had a little bit of a rough patch, rough patch, I don't know how to say that, but basically a couple of rough weeks where I was just taking losses, honestly, not knowing what I was doing, and then I started to improve. And how do I improve? How do you, how can you improve and what should you do now? I've told you the concepts that I use. I've taught you the, every single concept that I use, how I use them, and when. I haven't actually talked about kill zones yet, so I probably should talk about that on another part of this video. You probably sh already saw it. Yeah, let's just ignore that. When to do that? Where? Where has? Where do the fair body gaps have to show up? Where uh, should you be targeting? Where should you be entering? And so on and so forth. I've taught you what I believe is everything I use daily to be able to profit from the market. So what are you supposed to do now? You're not supposed today. Well, actually, today is Sunday, but um, this will be uploaded probably Monday, if if I get there in time. Um, but this this is not enough. You can't just watch this video, write the five steps on your chart, and tomorrow maybe Tuesday or Wednesday say, okay, let's trade with uh nomads capitals uh nomad capitals uh concepts or way of trading that he uses i don't think that you'll be able to do it and if you are able to do it then great right great because it's good for you right you start trading and that demo account is going to grow quite with quite big right i i truly don't believe it will be enough for me it wasn't enough the ict mentorship um just watching it i mean I had to watch it. First, I watched it without taking notes. Then I watched it taking notes. Then I watched it again because sometimes going back to the basics really help. There were things that I didn't know that I just had no idea existed before I rewatched it, rewatched the mentorship. This video is something that you could rewatch re a couple of times um, or listen to. I think that 
there are some parts that you of course have to look at there are parts that you have to just listen really like this one and the uh, thing is that just watching a mentorship just being a part of a community just being a part of a course is not going to do it it's just not going to do it so here's what i recommend you to do to learn to trade forex you have to see what patterns repeat understand how the market moves how it does it in a daily in a daily basis and how you can actually take advantage of that what i've done in this video is try to do everything for you and all that you really have to do is understand what i'm teaching what i'm trying to explain what concepts i'm trying to explain and how i use those concepts and then you would go to your charts and say so the concept that that nomad was talking about is showing up here so this will be probably a step, a step one. Then you wait for step two, step two occurs, then you wait for step three, step three happens, and then four and five. And you just take a demo on that. And maybe you take a win, maybe you take a loss. Thing is that after taking that win or that loss, you have to go back to that trade. You have to go back and say, I took this win and it happened because this, this, and this. Where was price when you tried to buy? Where was price when you tried to sell when you took this win or this loss? Why do you believe that you took this win or this loss? What do you believe it was worth the trade in the moment that maybe afterwards you thought, yeah, probably was not a good idea? And so on and so forth. Ask yourself those questions. That's why I came up with this couple of steps that I follow. By taking losses and saying, this failed because of this. So, next time I see this, I'm just not going to take it. I'm going to avoid it. And like that, you'll avoid both wins and losses. Of, of Hopefully, more losses and, than wins. So, this is what you'll do now. You've studied this. Ideally, you've taken notes, whether it's from here or from ICT Mentorship. As I've mentioned, ideally, you learn from ICT Mentorship. Then you come back here to say, okay, let's see how this guy applies, applies uh, those concepts, those exact same concepts. And what can you actually do about it? Afterwards, after taking those notes, you're going to go in the charts, as ICT mentions, with just hindsight, right? Don't backtest it. Just pure hindsight. Look at where the five steps showed up and say, okay, so here we have a run of stops. Here we have a market shift with a fair value gap in the five or the 15 minute. Let's see what happened in the lower time frames. Could have we taken a trade? Do the step four, does the step four show up or doesn't it? Could have we taken advantage of this? Did it happen through the kill zone? What other confluences did we have? And when you start looking at it, when you start uh kind of be not be um when you start seeing this more and more often then it comes easier for you to see that through the market you see things that you'll say uh okay so we do have a run of buy sell liquidity here this is enough we've seen multiple examples of this exact kind of a pattern or price moving has uh done multiple times so uh, we can actually try to take advantage of this. And you try to take advantage of that through a demo account. Did it work? Did it not work? Why did it work? Why did it not work? And you ask those questions and you realize, okay, so maybe uh, it's because the daily bias was incorrect. Maybe it's because this or that or this or that. There are multiple things that you can say why this trade or that trade failed. What I've done here is what I've known, not what I've known, what I've gotten used to, and what for me, what I what I personally watching the charts have seen work that these five steps are the result of again me going through the charts, looking for ICT's concepts, and saying, okay, so ICT says this, this is what happened on the charts. How can I use those concepts to my advantage? Right? How can I use those concepts to my advantage? Going back to charts, seeing what repeated, this is what I found. ICT also mentions as an example, ICT, the way they, that ICT does it, I've talked about this a couple of times. Um, when he has already the, the daily bias, he's going to look for a run about, about a high or below a low. On the 50 minute, 50 minute, lower high or lower, sorry, not lower high, swing high or swing low. 
and then jump to the four, the three, the two, the, and the one minute, or oh, also the five, I think it was. And whenever the first market shift in Fervali Gap shows up, that's what he's taken. Uh, I, I think. So of course I'm saying this. I think that's what what he trades. That's what I got from watching the videos. Uh, but I personally never really liked it. Never really liked trading like that. Uh, because it's like every single time a high was taken or a low was taken, I was just looking for lower time frames, and I, I just it didn't make sense for me. I was taking some wins, but multiple losses that I it's just something that I cannot bear. Currently, I think I have somewhere around a 60% win rate. Maybe a little bit higher because I've been really, really um, careful lately. If you see my past three weeks, I had on the previous week to this one, I had two losses. No, well, yeah, two losses, two wins, or three losses, three wins, about 50-50. And then this week, it was just one win, the one trade, the only trade that actually showed up with my strategy. Uh, and that will be, what, four wins, three losses? Yeah, 60%, approximately, 60%. Uh, and with a nice reward ratio of 4 or 5 R, it's definitely okay, right? Ideally, multiple losses of past week could have been actually uh, avoided. Um, most of them, really, because they were pretty easy to avoid. But, well, it is what it is. I honestly don't really mind taking those losses because I know that whenever everything does show up, I will take it and I'll cover for those losses without any kind of worries. So, you're going to ask yourself how much you're going to risk. What risk reward ratio you're going to be looking for? What are you going to be trading? You go into, onto a chart, you look for that, you see why you took this win, you see why you took this loss, you see why you could have taken this or that trade that showed up, and so on and so forth. Right? That's how you improve. You watch my weekly improvement method, which is really a little bit of a clickbaity video because I'm just doing the weak resume, honestly. But that's exactly what I do, and that's exactly how I progressed. How I was able to say, this is working with ICT's method. This is not working for me personally. I do like this. I do like that. And just looking at those charts, looking at each day's price action, I realized that this, what I'm explaining here, what I'm, um, well, what I'm trying to explain here, these five steps is what showed up. I'm showing this example up because it's a really clean example and happened this week. But we could go through previous weeks. We have, I mean, look at this. This is Thursday. This is a Friday last week. Uh, Thursday, we did have one trade, but nothing. Wednesday, took a loss. This is a, a live trading video. I took a win. Uh, I don't think I had the live session on this one, but another take profit. Just a lovely week, this one, boys. Live analysis and execution. I didn't actually take 11%. I, I, at least not in the paper trading, maybe it was. Uh, because I was looking for that high. But, um, yeah. Oh, is this a video with the market ship? Yeah, I made a mistake on this one. It's a shame. Lovely trade, as you can see. Blew up quite aggressively. And then I was looking for this one. Same exact thing. Actually, this was just paper trading. Yeah, like it for my funded, funded challenge. Lovely capital trades, really. Look at how price expanded higher. It's just... With these five steps... Things created again based on ICT mentorship concepts. It's insane the results that you can get as long as you apply them correctly in the right concept, context, and everything. And in this video, that's what I try to explain. That's what I try to talk about. To talk about, try to to teach you, right? And hopefully, you can learn from it. Hopefully, it's something that helps your trading, even if it's in the tiniest way right and i think that is all for me this was a really long video it took me an entire week to, to work on approximately and it was worth it it was worth it because I, I learned a lot while trying to explain this honestly there are multiple things that i just didn't know the the concepts to or the definition to and going back to watch as team's mentorship video again I, it was really fun honestly because it's just, you see the way that he explained things and you say, yeah, that's exactly what I look for. That's what I look for in the charts and uh, that's what shows up. That's what works, right? 
of course, not 100% of the time because there's human error, there's uh, the market just doesn't work out sometimes for us, and it is what it is. We're going to take losses. Most of the times, because of us. Not because of the strategy, not because of the steps, not because of the market, but because of us. We think that there's a pattern or pattern um, or setup that we are interested on, but really, we actually just were forced, was, were forced in that opportunity, right? So that's it from me. This was a really long video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you saw it all. And if you just skipped on the treaty on the talking parts where the video is static, you, you've missed out on a lot, really. You've missed out on a lot because that's the parts where I explain the most. <laughs> so that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this video was of help. And I've never asked for this, but if you don't mind subscribing and bring and activating that ringy thing the notification thing to get notified whenever i make a video i can't see it because i'm on my my own channel but uh that'd be ideal so you can see what i'm uploading and what i'm talking about that day so yeah that's pretty much it talk to you on the next one